This ESPN2 telecast is available on ESPN2 and in sparkling high definition on ESPN2 HD, presented by Olivia. Omaha, Nebraska, the College World Series Finals. There are countless cliches describing the spot the Tar Heels find themselves in, but we'll spare you most of that for now. The fact remains it's win or go home. For Oregon State, they look to complete a run unmatched in a decade, earning the title of back-to-back -back national champion. I'm a champion. If I can't win, it, then it can't be won. I focus on the game till I made it, son. So how you like me now? I said it, committed, I did it, baby. Everybody gonna remember your name in the day when you go. Like for low, if you go, push it on. And then how they gonna remember your style, who you were, what you did, did you live without fear? Will you be smiling? Will you be smiling? It's the College World Series Finals. Game two, now. Champions last year and perhaps again. Oregon State made the familiar ride to Rosenblatt today, loose as usual, knowing they were one win away from the improbability of repeating as national champions. But if North Carolina wants inspiration, they need only to look to last year when the shoe was on the other foot and the Beavers rallied past the Tar Heels in three games. The crowd in Omaha is ready. Will a champion be crowned tonight at the old ballpark or will there be a final showdown tomorrow night? The excitement we've seen all week is reaching a new level. Welcome to the NCAA College World Series presented on ESPN by Dick Sporting Goods. Tonight, game two of the finals. If Oregon State wins, they're champs once again. If North Carolina wins, we'll see you tomorrow night. Yesterday in game one, Jordan Leonardton got the Beaver offense rolling with this home run. They would score 11 times, and Jorge Reyes didn't even need that much help. He was dominant in winning his second game of this College World Series. Good evening, everybody. I'm Mike Patrick, along with two men who have won the World Series at the major league level, Barry Larkin and Oral Hertzheiser. It's great to have you with us. Oral Oregon State has been so good. They haven't trailed since the Charlottesville Regional way back in the middle of the NCAA. And at the center of that Oregon State team is Mitch Canham, their catcher. He is embedded in the fabric of this Beaver Nation. He leads with his bat. It's the power. His leadership with the pitching staff, it's always evident, and his personality, an everyday guy right there. And tonight, he's going to be leading Mike Stutes on the mound, who got roughed up last year in Game 2 against Carolina and really needs to respond to that outing beat Arizona State but was not on his best game we'll see how he responds tonight so far when North Carolina has played poorly Barry it's been fundamentals it's killed them. yeah they've really struggled this year they are, are this series they've really struggled with the uh, bunt defense they throw a, a couple balls away yesterday situational hitting they've really struggled you know offensively but the good news is this they have been in this situation before they know how to play in this particular situation and the guy that they're going on the mound tonight for them Luke Baconin is the guy that last time he pitched with his back against the wall went seven innings with one one hit and and, uh, seven strikeouts so he knows how to get it done and they have a healthy and arrested closer dominant closer and Andrew Kerrigan at the end of the game ready to go first pitch is coming right up it's do or die for North Carolina for Oregon State the title of a repeat champion is only one game away CAA College World Series presented on ESPN by Dick Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's. Yeah, yeah. And in part by City. <laughs> oh, I'm Let's sorry. Get it done. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you're just terrible. repeating my best stuff. You're a bad man. 
I love it though. No, I love it. It's fantastic. <laughs> uh, on my grave, it'll say I repeated my best stuff. <laughs> my sinker and my one liners. I already picked out my gravestone. Did Just you? I told you I was sick. <laughs> Okay, I left my pen up there. Here lies Lester Moore. Took two slugs from a 44. No less, no more. Yes. No less, no more. That's from Tombstone, but glad you could join us for the College World Series. Let's check in with Kyle Peterson. Kyle. Thank you, Mike. Talk with Mike Fox, head man for this Carolina ball club before the game. And he said the important thing for us today is to score first. He said we have not put the pressure on Oregon State. In fact, no one has in this entire tournament as they have not trailed. So that's the most important thing. The one thing to watch for them is to see if they're more aggressive on the base pass, either stealing, hitting, running, sacrifice bunting, which this Carolina team does not do very often. But they will try to score first, try to put a little bit of pressure on that Oregon State team. For more or in that Oregon State team. Let's go across the diamond to Aaron Andrews. Thank you, Kyle. This Beaver team, they're very laid back, yet not as loose as they were yesterday. And I had a chance to speak with one of their leaders, Mitch Canham, about that. He said it's definitely a different mood in here. They feel like they're on the verge of something special happening as it gets closer and closer. And his good friend and teammate, Darwin Barney, added, anticipation has settled in. But he also admitted to me, as he's a chatty Cathy, he said, look, we're really going to have to mess this thing up not to win our second straight title. Mike. Great personality, isn't he? Here's the Oregon State. As you look at Mitch Canham, here is the Oregon State Beavers lineup. Chris Hopkins, the center fielder, will lead it off. Joey Wong bat second and plays second base. Hot hitting D.H. Mike Lisman in the three hole. The cleanup man is the catcher, Mitch Canham. Darwin Barney, the outspoken shortstop, hits in the five hole. The left fielder, John Wallace, bats after him. Scott Sanchi will play right field. Jordan Leonardton with a lot of power is the first baseman and batting ninth and playing third base. Lonnie Leckelt. And they will face Luke Pekonen, who has already had one terrific outing here at the College World Series, an oral eight and one for the season. Well, he got roughed up in the regionals a little bit, but responded very well in his first start here with their backs against the wall. The elimination game where North Carolina is 4 and 0, but they face one more with him on the hill here today. North Carolina, as you heard from Kyle Peterson, is on record as saying they need to get the lead. The problem is Oregon State gets to bat first, and they have been so good at jumping on top of everybody. Fastball outside, and you see the shadows will be an immediate problem for the hitters. Chris Hopkins stands in. And two and one. A lot of the Hopkins. games we've had some overcast skies to begin mm -hmm. the games today. Bright sunshine, a big contrast in the sun and the shadows. Foul tapped behind the plate, two and two. Hopkins is a typical leadoff guy, their best base dealer, a kid with a lot of speed, slap hitter. He's hit 353 in the World Series here, six for 17. Chopped toward third, Flack charges and just got it. Nice play by Chad Flack at third. Needed to charge it, field it cleanly, and get off a good throw, and he did. Reed Franck, Seth Williams, and Tim Federoff in the outfield. From left to right on the infield, Flack, Horton, Gore, and Ackley. Fedorovich is behind the plate. Chad Flack made a nice job coming in there. I think yesterday's game started off kind of with the same type of hit. It was more towards third base line. Maybe a reversal of fortune today. Joey Wong stands in. Boy, he's had a great series and a great postseason. Since the playoffs started, he's hit 372, but he's hitting 467 here. That won't add to his total as he hits it the right at center fielder Seth Williams and two quickly gone here for the Beavers in the first.
Lisman will come up against Baconan, who went seven innings in his first College World Series outing, gave up only one run on three hits, struck out seven and walked only one, so he was dominant. And they're going to need the same kind of performance out of him today against an Oregon State team that has yet to lose here in Omaha. Yeah, he gave up a home run to Logan Johnson in the first inning against Louisville, but after that responded with 6 0. So, young man could settle in even quicker here today. Boy, Louisville came in here and just rocked one pitch after another. What a great hitting club. Which makes Pocono seven innings with one run even more impressive. Got fastball a little high. Pat Casey trying to do what would have been unthinkable at the beginning of the year, and that's repeat as national champions. And really, they struggled down the stretch, went 10 and 14 in the Pac 10 line drive to center and a good job by Seth Williams got a good break on the ball and ran it down in right center three up three down great start for Carolina they'll come to bat in the bottom of the first. Welcome back to the College World Series we'll go to the bottom of the first inning. North Carolina the only seeded team left Oregon State came in unseated here Reed Franck will lead it off for the Tar Heels he plays left field Josh Horton is the shortstop Dustin Ackley will bat third and play first base the freshman All-American Tim Fedorovich will catch and bat cleanup Tim Fedorov as they move the lineup around trying to get some more situational hitting his fifth Seth Williams in center field bat sixth Kyle Seeger the DH is seventh Chad Flack the third baseman bats eighth and batting ninth and playing second base is Garrett Gore. Michael Stutes is out to go for Oregon State 11 and four an ERA just over four. Well, Stutzi, he had a, a decent outing against Arizona State, really was overthrowing and was flat up. He needs to stay within himself, drive the ball downhill, and notice the rotation on the curveball today, especially when the shadows get away. He's got very good rotation, plus rotation on that curveball. Gave up four runs in six innings in his College World Series outing. Reed Franck to lead it off and he starts him off with a fastball for a called strike. Franck out of Charlotte North Carolina leading home run hitter second leading RBI man and he's leading off. Some teams like to do this. Get a guy up there who can be a game changer right away. And of course you put him first he's going to get as many at bats as you can possibly find a way to get them up there. Yeah, only hitting 250 in the College World Series. And he'll draw a walk to start the ball game. Here's the way this really good defense will line up for Oregon State. Wallace Hopkins and Sanchi around the outfield. The infielders, Leckelt, Barney, Wong, and Leonardton. Barney and Wong, a sensational combination. Canham, a terrific catcher behind the plate, and Stutes on the hill. Well, Mike, I think uh, Co Casey is talking to the home plate umpire about that hit by pitch right there. We've seen this the entire tournament. You see Reed Frunk not really making an opportunity or to, to get out of the way, and that pitch is not that far out of the strike zone. And I think that's uh, Pat Casey's content contention that you know he's got to he's got to move out the way, and that pitch wasn't far off the plate at all. Yeah, Reed Frank is his feet. Look at his back foot almost on the line. Watch the elbow. It's actually over the corner of the plate. That is almost a strike. It's probably called a ball high, but the ball is actually on the plate. The rule says if a batter is intentionally hit by moving or rolling any part of his body into the pitch, the batter shall not be awarded first base. It also says another rule if the ball is in the strike zone, it's a called strike and not a hit batter. And this will be addressed in the offseason by the rules committee about how to how to improve this and this is why uh, 50 hit batters and it shatters the previous record of 36 which was only set four years ago. Well it's just bad for the game. 
Yeah, it is. Talking to Coach Fox, they were going to do whatever they can today to try to make things happen. To the gap in left center, and that's going to fall off the bat of Josh Horton. So they move Horton into the second slot in the batting order, and he delivers with a single left center. Well, like we said, or as I was saying, that uh, we talked to Coach Fox today, as you see Josh Horton staying on the ball away and driving it into the left center gap. Mike Fox said they were going to try to do some things today to try to score early to try to look, put a little pressure on Oregon State and there you see the hit and run right there. And this is a team that does not bunt very well about the only way they have advanced runners this year is to try to hit behind the runner. They do not sacrifice well at all. Uh -huh. Sixty one straight innings that Oregon State has not been behind. They're in danger of on, falling on, behind on, here in the first inning. Ackley, their best hitter, is up right now. The Tar Heels have had leadoff men on four times in the first six innings yesterday, including a runner at second on the first and the fourth inning and still failed to score. So they need to come through here. Ackley hitting 401. But only six for 25 here in Omaha. Has a school record 117 hits led the nation this year in that category and still building on his own record. Kid that doesn't show a lot of emotion a very stoic personality just goes out and plays. Carolina has been awful with runners in scoring position but not this time and Ackley slaps a single to left to drive in the first run of the ball game and that 61 innings in a row streak is over. Well, I think the third baseman Leckwood had had problems seeing that particular ball you see that we talked about that shadow already and if we can see his reaction it's almost like a de delayed reaction see the balls hit there and it looks like he really didn't pick it up until it got out of that shadow so Oral talked about it being a little bright out here and that shadow being very pronounced out there and maybe that particular situation Leckwood couldn't pick up the ball. He was literally one step slow in reacting to that. Fedorovich squares to bunt. He has only one sacrifice this year. But this is how important this is. You've got your cleanup hitter who was sacrificed once, and he's looking to lay down a bunt and advance runners. Well, he struggled a little bit so far this series, so it doesn't really make a difference. Just make it happen. Right down the third baseline, they will throw Fedorovich out. He had only been two for 23, but he did his job that time and got the bunt down for the sacrifice. Well, he squared around early and really showed he was going to bunt, but it turned out to be self defense. Stutz's ball runs up and in on him, just grabs the barrel of the bat right in his face. If he follows that ball off, he's going to get in the brim of his cap right there. It turns out because he had the angle of the bat so perfectly placed that the ball bounced off the bat. Perfect bunt down third. Great sacrifice. And now Federoff with runners at second and third and a chance. To give North Carolina a couple of more runs here with a first inning base hit. Fouls this one toward the Beavers dugout. Fedorov hitting 318 in the World Series. Second team all ACC out of Flagtown, New Jersey. This guy's a very aggressive hitter, but gets the bat on the ball, doesn't strike out very much. And with the infield back, if he puts it in play, they've got another run home. Stoots high with a fastball. Well, Fedroff is a guy that hits second and normally hits second in the lineup. And, and Coach Mike Fox, as we talked about earlier, decided to move him down in the lineup to give him a more of an RBI opportunity uh, hitting in that fifth slot today. We talked about Leckelt having a problem with the shadows. Did you ever have those problems as an infielder? I mean, how much did it bother you? It definitely comes into play. You just can't see until the ball gets out of that shadow. And as with the case with Leckel, then it may be too late. 
It's a great advantage for the pitcher, but you never wanted to have the ball come back at you. So I can imagine the third baseman, the second closest guy on the field, and usually where the balls hit the hardest, the hot corner. The reaction time is really cut in, cut in half. Two balls and a strike to Fedorov. Runners at second and third. Still only one out in the inning. And a run home for North Carolina. The first time Oregon State has trailed since June 2nd in the Charlottesville Regional. They have just been ridiculously good since then. And North Carolina has accomplished what it desperately wanted to do get the early lead. This one's fouled out of play, two and two. Runners in scoring position, one of the fundamentals you talked about. And whether they got a break with the ball coming out of the shadows or not, the run counts. Well, it doesn't make a difference how you get it done. It's just a matter of getting it done. You know, very indicative of what uh, Coach Fox, I'm sure, talked with his boys last night about. You know, you saw Fedorovich absolutely give himself up and show it early, and he's the number four hitter, and he's button. So it's little things that make the big difference. Fedorov on the ground down to first. They'll come home on the throw, and he is out. Oh. Leonardton came up. Very good defensive first baseman made the perfect throw to Canham, and he was waiting. I'll tell you, that was an impressive play right there. Simply because Leonardton is not playing in. He's actually playing back. Exactly. And so he's not Ow. thinking go to the plate. However, that ball's hit hard enough, and he has the time to pick up Josh Horton at third base Ow. and sees he's got time to make a throw, makes an accurate throw, throws it to the third base side of home plate, which is very important, and he can apply the tag. Mitch Cannon can apply the tag. Fetter off a board on the fielder's choice, and Ackley goes to third, but there's now two out. For Seth Williams, who is only four for 20 here in Omaha, hitting 200 in the series. Kid who has really improved this year, cutting down on his strikeouts with a shorter swing. Man on third, less than two out. You got two instructions contact or let it go through. And right there, Josh Horton did not do a very good job with his secondary lead. Secondary lead, you need to get the weight onto the front foot. As soon as you see the bat moving, you hear contact on the ground. You've got a break. He was late. That's the speed of a shortstop not making it on a ground ball to first. This one's hitting the air to left center. Hopkins is over and makes the catch. So North Carolina breaks on top, but they could have done more damage left to a board. It's 1 0, end of one. It's 1 0 after one. Home plate umpire Dan Mascaro is kind enough to wear a microphone for us today. Let's go back to his conversation with Pat Casey after the hit batter. The ball inside. The ball was in the box. The ball was now out over the plate. Look at his cleat. Okay, one point. His cleat mark. He's almost out of the box when he starts. But it doesn't you matter. The good. pitch. I, I'm, I'm watching that, Pat. I, I've no, got to watch this on tape. They take their arms. They stick them over the plate. They stand there. They don't move. This is. This is. It's been addressed, hasn't it? Please watch it. You see Irvine. 12 hit batters here. North Carolina now with 11 second. And I think Pat Casey has a gripe because we've seen batters brought back in this College World Series. It's got so outrageous the number of hit batters we've had. And batters are using it as an offensive tool now instead of within the spirit of the game and the rule as far as being protected of their bodies. I think the spirit of the game is 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 the key. What they're doing may be within the letter of the law but it is against the spirit of the game. And I think they have to come down on the on the pitcher side a little bit more. Well, you can see that particular pitch is not that far off the plate. You know, Mike Stutes has got to pitch in there in order to establish the inside part of the plate. And if every time he throws in there, someone's going to stick their arm out, then he's going to take. They're going to effectively take that pitch away. And Reed Franck is no stranger to being hit by a pitch. That's the 21st time this year, so it's a big part of his offensive arsenal as a leadoff guy. Well, in my opinion, it's just one, another one of the rules that need to be addressed. Two and something needs to be changed because the, the number of bat, hit batsmen that we've had, it definitely changes the complexity of the ball game. Canham off the third baseman's glove. Flat couldn't track it down. And Canham will be aboard with a single. Hey. 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 The 
you see Mitch Cannon ball away stand down on the ball and once again Chad Flack I don't know if he looks like he had a pretty good reaction time just a tough play to make actually a nice, <laughs> it was actually a nice play it was almost made a great play on it hop came up on him it looked like it hit him on the heel of the top of the glove as he tried to backhand it. It's one thing to be able to see the balls coming at you. It's another thing that's in soft focus and see the angle. It's another thing to get that sharp focus to get that ball to hit that glove there. So I still think the shadows impaired his vision a little bit. Darwin Barney batting behind his close friend Mitch Canham showed bunt on the first pitch 0 and 1. Barney hitting 333 here with three RBIs postseason. He has driven in nine slugs this one down the left field line. Take him long to regain the lead. And Darwin Barney with only his fifth home run of the year. What a time to pull one out. Looked like Darwin Barney was looking for a pitch inside. Luke with Paconin throws him a fastball and on the inner half, elevated. And Darwin just gets it out there. He is a guy that's known for his glove but he can change we talked about it he can change the, the game on both sides of the ball offensively and defensively. That is a new school record 237 breaking the mark set last year by Jacoby Ellsbury. And people are going to look back at the top of the first inning where North Carolina got a run and left two guys on had a runner thrown out at the plate. Let's see if that was the turning point in this ballgame the fact that they didn't have a big rally and put three four or five on the board. One of the things that has been lingering in the back of our minds is how will Oregon State respond when they are down and Darwin Barney one of their leaders and personalities does it. This one is creamed into right off the bat of John Wallace for a base hit got out there in a hurry to fetter off three hits in a row. Now time for a sports center 30 at 30. Here's Scott Reese. Scott thanks very much. This is Scott Sanchi who's hitting a crisp 444 out here. Statistical oddity he's hit into two double plays this year. Both in the College World Series. But he has a home run and three driven in as well. Well impressive how Oregon State has responded to falling behind. We wondered if the looseness would stay there. These guys have jumped on fastballs. They've still been swinging at hitters pitches. They're not pressing and chasing the ball out of the zone. So they weren't down very long but they did have to experience it and they jumped right back on top. Darlin Barney right behind Pat Casey making him laugh. He does that a lot. Pitch out. Nothing going on two one. and it's two balls and a strike and Andrew Corrigan the closer is already up for North Carolina. Darwin Barney today in the paper said you know everything went well for us we runners were moving we got some hits we put bunts down made him throw away we actually made Pat Casey look like he knows what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> then he thought better of that and laughed runner goes and the ball tap foul. So it'll be two two and Darwin Barney has been loose since he got here. Kid with a great personality with his teammates and with the other guys he gets on base he starts somebody gets down to second he'll start up a conversation kid who really enjoys baseball and enjoys life and boy what a future he's got as a shortstop you see that smile on his face but I tell you what you look at his eyes runner goes on the two two and is into second base on a stall on a steal Wallace Got there ahead of the throw from Fedorovich. Yeah. 
Not many stolen bases for Wallace at all. He's one for one this year, believe it or not. But Oregon State is not going to break or back down. They are one win away from the national championship. If they see an opening, they're going to go for it. 3 2 to Sanchi, and now he'll be trying to pull the ball to the right side, if nothing else, and gets a base on balls instead. Boy, and Stutes starting to struggle right here. He's given up three hits, including a homer, and Kerrigan trying to get ready in a hurry. I said Stutes, but Conan, excuse me. He's obviously having a tough time. And Kerrigan getting ready just as as quickly as he can. When you are desperate you can go to your closer in the second inning and hope to get anything that he can give you. Well I watched you know Woodard and White really struggled early. Before Woodard's last performance and White's last performance, the guys didn't even get out of the second inning or didn't right. get through the second inning. And Luke Paconin was a guy that, that stepped up when they played Louisville in the elimination game. You know, we talked to Mike Fox early today, and uh, and he told us, listen, this is it for us. So we're going to come out with Andrew Kerrigan. We really, you know, we didn't know what that meant, but obviously we can see he was serious about it. Nobody out in the second. Runners at first and second. Two already home. And after the Darwin Barney Homer with a man on board they have gone to small ball trying to add to it Jordan Leonardton with all that power is up there. Let's see what they do with him. Leonardton has one sacrifice this year. Here's a kid who had a home run in the Little League World Series. He played for Canada. Has three postseason home runs in college getting to the World Series. Two of them here. That's inside, 2 and 0. Very powerful bat. Canadian kid that uh, Pat Casey described as an area swinger. That low in, middle up in pitch he really loves. A left hander. He's got a short compact swing, kind of a short arm swing in there. Doesn't hit the ball away very well. Even when the ball's in, he'll drive it opposite field. Smokes this one to dead center field. Seth Williams back about five steps short of the track. That's the first out. It will get Wallace over to third. First and third with one gone. Leonardton hit it on a line, but right at the center fielder Williams as he retreated. So put Conan trying to get out of a jam here without any more damage. And Leckelt will stand in hitting 286 in the College World Series, which is better than his season average, 235. Just hasn't hit that well for them all year. It takes a breaking ball for a called strike. You know, the easiest pitch to hit with these shadows is a high fastball because it originates in the same place as it ends up. Anything else that you can make break late or keep down or give some spin to that the hitter can't recognize, and everything that's been hit hard so far has been a high fastball. Two on one out here in the second North Carolina broke on top in the bottom half of the first but Oregon State came right back to regain the lead and they're bidding for more. Leckled who had two huge home runs in the Virginia Regional in Charlottesville as they had to travel all the way across the country. To help get them to the Super Regional, takes a called strike. 0 and 2. North Carolina needs a double play. They had five yesterday, tied a World Series record. But Leckel, not much of a candidate. He hasn't grounded into any all year. Breaking pitch low. One ball and two strikes from Luke Putconan. Oh, 
Here we go. One and two. After Leckelt, Leckelt would go back to the top of the order for Hopkins. That one's in the dirt. Runner goes, and there will be runners in second and third as Sanchi took off and picked a perfect pitch to run. Fedorovic had no chance. That's the that's just aggressive base running right there. So as a uh, base runner you see the ball down in the dirt especially in a double play situation and you're on first base you're getting that secondary lead trying to break up the double play and you see that ball anywhere down around the dirt your first movement is breaking to second base. Good job of base running right there by Sanchez. Leckel now does not have to worry about the double play just trying to get it in play and tried to check his swing but couldn't it strikes out for the second out of the inning. Well, this is where Barry talked about yesterday you are just trying to put the ball in play the infielders are back in the middle you got a, a run to pick up just look for the ball away try and stay on it fight off the ball inside try and hit yourself a little ground ball up the middle play pepper. But a little too aggressive and with the shadows and a sharp biting curveball ends up being a strikeout. Hopkins who grounded out his first time has runners at second and third now with two out. Oregon State leading two to one. Be huge for Pocconan and North Carolina if he can get out of this jam without any more run scoring. Ball. Met Chris, Chris Hopkins dad today in the lobby of the hotel. He kind of set me up because he asked me who I thought was going to win the night before he introduced himself. <laughs> I said you know I'm, I'm playing a pretty neutral right now but Oregon looks pretty good emotionally. He goes oh I'm glad you said that my son's Chris. <laughs> he had a pretty good scout report on his son's team too. He said you know some of the parts is probably greater than the individuals. We don't have that big huge star and the big huge bat but. These guys play together they play loose and uh, he had a nice scouting report on his son's team. Hit toward third look at the speed of Hopkins. And off the bag Ackley came off to feel the low throw from Flack. Hopkins is safe and the run scores. Chris Hopkins can definitely run and Chad Flack knows he's got to get rid of that ball quickly. He comes up and makes a pretty good play. Unfortunately that ball on the, in the ground and actually in the dirt and actually has to come look he jumps off the bag in order to block that ball. Great call by the first base umpire sure right was. there. It's an error on the throw no RBI but it's three to one. Hopkins aboard on the error. Sanchi goes to third and this is Joey Wong. Once again the fundamentals betraying North Carolina. Been a very fundamentally sound team throughout the whole season but they have been snake bit all the way back to last year when they played OSU in the finals as far as executing against this particular team. That'll get out of play. And in all fairness to Chad Flack I don't know if that is a that's not a routine play right there you know you've got shadows you've got a slow infield and you've got a very fast okay. runner that hits the ball you got to come in and backhand it. You know I know a lot of third basemen in the big league that will have trouble making that play right there. My buddy Ryan Zimmerman I don't know if you guys saw the the replay of him uh, when they were playing the Tigers and the ball went into his shirt the other day. He, <laughs> he just put that one right in his shirt right there. Runner goes, pitch is foul. When they have people on, they just want to put pressure, pressure, pressure on the defense, especially after North Carolina has shown they can be vulnerable to it. This is their style of play, though, and then, you know, Joey Wong has been in the middle of all of it. As you can see he's hitting 372 with seven ribbons in eight games, and he's seven for 12 in the last four games. So this guy, you know, although he's not one guy that's going to, he's not going to pop. He's not going to be the guy that's going to hit the three-run homer and carry the team offensively. He's doing the small things. 31 pitches this inning for Pocconan, and Hopkins cruises into second base with no throw. Well, the breaking ball has been the pitch that is 
Got him some outs. Watch for the wild pitch in the dirt right here. One and two. For the man on third. And Kerrigan just itching to get in there. Remember, he's the closer. The guy who usually comes in in the ninth after a setup man takes care of it. The longest outing he's had in his career, four innings. And they're calling on him, perhaps, in the second. Well, in all our meetings with the head coaches, because of this format, they've talked about how the save is not always in the ninth inning. Sometimes it's in the sixth or the seventh. But I didn't hear anybody talking about the second. Three balls and two strikes. Joey Wong, the eighth man to hit this inning, and he walks. Well, you would think if North Carolina is going to go to the closer in the second inning, this may be the time because Lisbon is up. A guy who can make this a seven to one game with one cut. Mike Fox on the dugout steps, and here he comes. One more look to see if Kerrigan is ready. The theory behind this there is no tomorrow if you don't win today. If you got to use them all use them all. We'll check out Kerrigan's numbers when we come back. Too. They're just going to go after people. You got to be intense. You got to be mentally tough. And you just have to, I mean, all the pressure's on you at the end of the game, so you got to want the ball and go after people. Closer has to have that attitude. They're just going to go after people. You got to be intense. You got to be mentally tough. And you just have to, I mean, all the pressure's on you at the end of the game, so you got to want the ball and go after people. This kid is just lights out 18 saves this year tied for the national lead a microscopic ERA of one two one oral he's the real deal he throws it very hard he's got exceptional secondary stuff he's got the mentality of a closer and he can go longer than the third of an inning just getting him out of this jam he'll probably get pushed to three or four innings if he can keep them in the game the closer is on in the second as Yogi Berra once said it gets late out here early <laughs> it's late for this ball club it's early for Kerrigan and Lisman two home runs five RBIs in the College World Series stands in with the bases loaded Kerrigan can get it up at ninety five baseball is a, a game of momentum Oregon State has momentum and Mike Fox doesn't want it to get out of hand so he's going with Kerrigan early in this game in my opinion. Just because you know what he can't save it until the ninth inning because he might not get there. Lisman hitting 400 in Omaha. Late on a fastball fouls that one out of play. Darwin Barney looking on. It's three to one in the second. Struck him out on a high fastball. Kerrigan shows you why he has saved 18 games this year. He's got magical stuff. But Oregon State has gotten three runs in the second to regain the lead.
Welcome back to the College World Series in Omaha. Three to one Oregon State. Let's check in with Aaron Andrews. Aaron. Mike, Oregon State players really respect Mitch Canham, not only for what he does on the field, but what he's had to endure off of it. On the very first day of his freshman year, his mother Kim died of a drug overdose, and Canham has told us that he used that incident as inspiration to try to help motivate people who are dealing with the same kind of problems. I mean, this is a guy that donates his time and he speaks with kids about drugs and drug prevention and talking to some of his teammates like Darwin Barney, who says Mitch Canham is one of my heroes because this kid is a warrior. He didn't let what he dealt with in his freshman year with his mother bring him down. And it's clearly what we've gotten to observe from him. One of the greatest stories in college baseball right now. What a good kid he is. His grandparents. Terry and Barb are here to enjoy watching him play. He will go on to professional baseball and with any luck will have a tremendous career there. But he is a quality kid. North Carolina has to go back to work with the bottom third of the order. This is Kyle Seeger. The heels are down three to one. They had a brief lead the first time Oregon State's been behind in 61 innings of the NCAA tournament and 50 innings of the College World Series. The numbers on Seeger sitting 286 in the series has driven in a couple. Psychologically, if you're North Carolina, it's important to try to come back with something right away because uh, you know you press up on these guys and they push back. You know you're thinking you're elated at first you're like OK we scored we got them behind then not even a half an inning later they drop a three spot on you so it's very important for them to answer the response of Oregon State. Seager so takes a pitch low. From Stutes it's two and two. Baseball is normally a roller coaster of emotion. For North Carolina they had to be so high getting that first run in the first inning. This one lofted to left. Lisman is waiting. He's got it for one out. We have shown you ever since we have been here a new statistic called win probability. The factors of the score the inning the runners on number of outs the position in the batting order based on over a million plays that they have used in the database. And the win probability right now, Oregon State, a two to one favorite to win. If you go through all those probabilities with a three to one lead in the second inning. We would caution you, however, it says probability, not something you can put in the bank. Well, we've seen that shift a lot as far as the scoreboard and the probability. It's just kind of an added conversation starter, really, of what you logically would be sitting there with your buddy or your family, kind of predicting who's going to win or lose. Somebody has put a number on it now. Chad Flack, 0 and 2, spoils a fastball. Of course, it's the kind of thing that uh, the team that's ahead is going to put a lot of emphasis on it. The team that's behind going to say hey forget that stuff you know <laughs> well I tell you as a hitter or out there as a player you could care less of what the statistics say you still have an opportunity Hopkins ranges back toward the warning track and makes the catch for the second out of the inning right now Oregon State's got to be back up emotionally and Carolina has to be down a little bit. Well yeah this is a mental battle that you go through even at the big league level I can remember giving up runs on the mound and going through that emotional battle of I'm not going to give up I've got to stay within my game plan you know I've got to attack Barry with this pitch I've got to do this and he's already got a hit or two and three RBIs and I know he's hot and how am I going to adjust myself we just got to play the game. Well you hit 300 off him so there were easy, days easy Mike <laughs> there were days where you did have a hit in a couple of RBIs where there, there were were days but I, I, I tell you it's you know it's about playing the game there's a game within the game and you know regardless of what the situation is out there there's the battle between the hitter and the pitcher and that's where you really try to focus and that's what you want to win you don't want to just win the game you want to win every single pitch of course we could point out that hitting 300 is being out seven out of ten times. That's right. Well, it is being out seven out of ten times. But the thing that I was saying easy to you about was the fact that you had that off the top of your head you didn't have to look <laughs> it up. <laughs> I know your history. Oh, oh. You're an all-star. I know everybody's all-star history. 
A ball and two strikes to the number nine man Garrett Gore. <laughs> Struck him out looking. One two three for Stutes. Mitch Canham Oregon State's catcher and leader coming up in the next inning. Two years straight, repping the pack. Never to let anyone's flag hold us back because we stacked. Old state attack, letting you know we for sure winning mo. Teams where we win, we knocking at they dough. I'm a savage, got a crew of men ready to win. We hater bust in in quick fashion. Hard working fellas doing that. Old state repping when the bat's in my hand, you know what's so weapon. Little inspirational rap for the ball club. I still don't know how they do that. <laughs> it's a fast mind. No wonder I don't know how. <laughs> Canham leads it off here in the Oregon State third. They're up three to one. Ball. And Kerrigan, the closer, is on for his second inning of work. Canham seven for 17 at the College World Series. Kid is a streak hitter, really good athlete. Uh, we were watching batting practice as people went in and out of the cage. We really couldn't see their numbers because of the meshing around. And Barry and I were commenting on who do we think that is. And Barry said, I think it's Canham. And it was like the feet were awesome. The hips were fast. The hands were great. The posture was good. The swing was solid. First round draft. Pick. Ripped past the diving shortstop Horton. So Canham is two for two. A ringing single there. We're at the College World Series in Omaha for North Carolina. This is an elimination game. Oregon State won the first last night, 11 to 4. Carolina has to come back tonight to force game three. They did get the lead in the first inning, but Oregon State responded and is back on top three to one. Can they possibly repeat as national champions with only two position players back? There are two leaders, Canham, who was at first, and this is Darwin Barney, who's up now. They think they can. It would be a great story for college baseball. Barney homered his first time up. A screaming line drive that just cleared the wall in left field. And that's our sonic drive of the game. His fifth home run of the year. Just got over that yellow pad on top of the wall, which is in play. Hit down to first off the glove of Ackley. He recovers and will take it himself. Three unassisted as Canham goes into second base. Now John Wallace who singled a line drive to right his first time. You know Mike one of the things that scouts look at is when the best face the best or when you're thinking about moving a guy from double A to triple A how does he do against the three four hitter how does he do against the number one starter well that at bat Mitch Canham against Kerrigan was a very good at bat for scouts that's when they sit up and take notice because those are the people they're going to compete against when they get the professional ball and then to the big leagues. Bunted toward third rolls foul Wallace trying to bunt his way on. Guys are really good at small ball. They love to manufacture runs. But it's an oddity. This is not a team 
that gives you the flipper over the plate and tries to get hit and a lot of small ball teams in college that's exactly what they do. Well yeah they do but but Pat Casey is not going to have his guys go out there and do that he's a fundamentalist he wants to go out there he's a teacher I mean there's a reason he's still he's still there he's had a lot of opportunities to go elsewhere but he wants to be there and he wants to continue to teach and he's done a great job with these guys they're out there playing the game the right way and trying to win the ball game. That one's up and in. It's hard, One to of the, hard to believe that he could have been gone, too. Boy, it is. And for a lot of people in Oregon, it was hard to believe that he didn't go because he had a chance to go to some really big programs, including Notre Dame. One of the Oregon State fans told me they scraped up every dime and nickel they could find in the state of Oregon to keep Pat Casey. And they're just delighted with the results that he stayed, signed a new contract, and that they're back in Omaha. And he's starting to get sentimental here. I know it's coming something close if they win two national championships. The thing he gets sentimental most about is losing Darwin Barney and Mitch Canham, his two leaders that don't he's blame them. very close to. Yeah, guys like that don't come along very often. I mean, there's a lot of good kids and a lot of good players in college, but when you have great personalities, great character, and great talent on top of it, that is that is a rarity, and he will miss it. Well, we're talking about scouts, and scouts will talk about the guy has great ability, great bat speed, great hands, and he's got a great face. And these guys both have great faces. It's amazing that big hearts come through into facial expressions and to eyes, and even players recognize. I mean, Barry's up here. He's He's been here just as long as I have the whole week, but we recognize the guys that really have it inside. And that's one of the things I was talking about earlier about Darwin Barney. If you look in his eyes, you see this nice, gleeful smile that he's got going on. But you look at his eyes and you can see the intensity in his eyes and the passion. These guys all play with passion. And when you see that, I know in, in football and basketball, more and more teams are trying to look at that quality of a human being in determining who they're going to draft. How do you think baseball does in that regard? Is, is baseball more cognizant of that than other sports, do you think? I think that's why you have organizations that do a great job in the draft year in and year out because that's such an intangible then you have scouts that are talented enough to find that attribute that is a guy that's not only good at a, a, a watch not only good at looking at stats and power not only good at looking at a guy field ground ball and see has soft hands but he can look into the soul of a player and know who's going to show up 162 games who's going to have good off the field habits who's going to be in the weight room busting it who's going to be a good teammate and those are the things that can put you over the top. Two men on one out for Scott Sanchi. We playing against Barry. I knew his ability, but I also knew Barry was going to show up every day, no matter if he was 0 for 4 or if he just booted a ball in the infield. He wasn't going to throw in it bat away, and that's what you respected in a competitor. That's who you want on your team. Little blooper into right center field. It's going to fall and get a run home. Sanchi with a looping single to right, and it's 4 to 1 Oregon State. Didn't hit it hard, but perfectly placed. You see a fastball out over the plate. And Scott Sanchi just hits it off the end of that bat. Gets enough of it to drop it in front of the center fielder there. You know, and Andrew Kerrigan can't do it all by himself. You know, he can only minimize the damage that's been done and try to give these guys an opportunity to stay in the game. Anytime you see a closer come out of his role as a closer late in the ball game, you're always concerned with how he's going to perform. And, you know, and you, you start to stretch these guys out, they become a little more vulnerable. The win probability now nearly four to one in favor of Oregon State, even though it's very early, only the third inning. And here's Leonardton, who has homered twice in Omaha. Looking down for a sign. What do they want him to do on first and third? One out. Hey. Takes that for a called strike. This, in my opinion, is huge for North Carolina right now because if you're North Carolina, if you're playing on this team, you're thinking, okay, we're throwing our ace out there and he's going to stop this onslaught. Yeah. Well, if he gives up a couple more runs this particular inning, this could be devastating for the psyche of the players. Chopped up the middle. Got one throw across, got two. Josh Horton took his time, knew he had plenty of time to get Leonardton, who doesn't run well, 
and he gets him out of a big jam with the double play but it's four to one Oregon State as we go to the bottom of the third. Outside of Rosenblatt Stadium that great statue inside it's four to one Oregon State and down on the field it's Aaron Andrews Mike Oregon State undergrad assistant Kurt Steele had a pretty busy 48 hours if you will how about getting married yesterday back in Oregon his lovely wife Kathy now here today in the stands with her veil on no less but <laughs> you know he had this wedding plan for a year his best man getting ready to be deployed to the Middle East so he wanted to get it you know he wanted to have him in his wedding. Well, here's a funny story that happened yesterday during the seventh inning, which, by the way, ended up being the time his best man was giving a toast. Oregon State started chipping in some runs, and the whole crowd went nuts inside the uh, reception, so no one was paying attention to the toast. <laughs> Great wedding, I heard. Uh, I heard they arrived this this afternoon at 1.30, but they had to leave Oregon this morning at about 3.45. But he's here. He's ready to go. and. God bless Kathy for being here on her honeymoon. I think Kathy <laughs> deserves a standing ovation, Aaron. That is, uh, that's pretty good stuff. And I tell you what, if this guy hadn't gone back home for the wedding, <laughs> there wouldn't have been a wedding <laughs> anytime. Oh. First time I've ever seen someone at the ballpark after they got married still wearing the veil, though. One and one. There's a pitch inside. You see that pitch inside. Reed Pronk did not even attempt to get out of the way once again. That pitch missed him by a matter of inches, not centimeters. He got plunked to start the ball game, and that's a fastball. Outside and high, three balls and a strike. Stutz has allowed only two hits and Frank draws a base on balls. So the table setter does it again to keep up with all of the NCAA College World Series information. Just log on to NCAAsports.com. It's the official online home for all 88 NCAA championships. And now Horton, who had the first three strikeout game of his entire career yesterday and had been in a horrible slump for one game only it's amazing how one game can really upset a good hitter he's still hitting 348 at the College World Series so it's not like he walked off the bus a week ago and hasn't hit anything hard since baseball players have to have short memories you don't want to remember if you did one thing good yesterday you strike out three times but if you hit one ball well you've got to remember the one ball and the approach you had on the ball you hit well. Second round draft choice of Oakland. And all at once, Stutes finds the plate dancing around on him a little bit. If North Carolina doesn't come back and force a game three, they're going to look at themselves very hard about their lack of fundamentals. A team that has worked on sacrifice bunting all year long just hasn't been able to do it. Just not good at that aspect of the game. Some teams can get away with not using that as an offensive weapon, but there are times when it really seems mandatory, Barry. Well, when you when you play at such a high level, everyone on this field is a good baseball player. The difference between the guys that are successful and not successful are the guys that can execute. The guys that practice at that high level so when the game comes about they don't have to turn it up they just are on cruise control. Base hit through the hole into left field. So two on with nobody out Horton two hits today. And here come the heels. And that gets their best hitter. One of the best hitters in the nation to the plate Dustin Ackley who got his 118th base knock first time up. 
Now Mike Stutz has been collapsing that back leg and throwing uphill. He's not been able to get the ball to his non arm side. As soon as you collapse your knee that great, your hip can't function and get around. See how the back hip is actually behind his front leg and never fires forward? As soon as you bust that knee over your toe, you're going to shut down your back hip. You're going to feel like you're throwing uphill and you can't get back to the hitter. And everything he has thrown has either been high and away or on the outer half of the plate to lefties. We also saw in that replay, Reed Frump, that was a hit and run right there. Here's Zachley. Oh. Curveball way inside. North Carolina is not going to sit around and take it. They're going to continue to try to be aggressive and, and, and bounce back. Like I said, this is a, a big inning for them. Try to get something done offensively. So the moves that John Fox made in his lineup changes working so far. One ball. Five. Ackley, what a future he has. Freshman of the year nationally uses all fields, good power, good against left handers, good against everybody. There's just no hole in what he does. Struggled out here the first three games since then, six for 13, two home runs, four driven in, and he has never been up in a more pressure packed spot than right now. Well, he came into this tournament uh, hitting third in the lineup and and he did struggle uh, and Mike Fox moved him to seventh moved him to fifth and here he's back hitting third. Which hangs outside. Two balls and a strike from Stutes. No action in the Oregon State bullpen. Well Stutes could fix this in a hurry if he would just stay tall on his back leg everything else is functioning well he's hiding the ball well he's. He's doing everything but he's over trying and collapsing that back leg. Here's the 2 1 to Ackley on the corner 2 2. It's like Oral said every pitch that he is getting by these hitters is elevated. Every pitch has been either up and away or just up in the zone. Boy it's dangerous to elevate anything to Ackley. Uh, that's my job. That is my job. Mike Fox wanting to talk to home plate umpire Dan Mascoro and you heard him say that's my job and I don't know what he was responding to. Kyle Peterson you have any word on that one. Yeah Mike before the game when I talked to Mike Fox one thing he pointed out is this Oregon State team plays at a different pace than they're used to they try to slow the game down and you'll see sometimes Mitch Canham look over to that dugout take his time to get the pitch call and then put that pitch call in It was one of the things that really bothered this club yesterday I think that's what it was right there they want the pace to be a little bit faster than it was yesterday and I guarantee you that's what he wants to talk to Dan Mascara about right there. All right thanks Kyle. Here's the 2 2 to Ackley. Popped it up. That'll get back on the screen just below us. That's a little upside down from the normal logic. Usually it's hitters that are stepping out to slow the pitcher down so mm -hmm. that they can't suffocate the hitter. And here we have an offensive team griping about the pace of the pitcher slowing down. Probably a lot of these coaches have read, read Dave Peltz's book on golf. <laughs> for a practice swing within 9 to 11 seconds of when you take your shot <laughs> that you can feel it. Three balls two strikes. Barry we can tell Oral is really big on mechanics right. <laughs> I knew that I knew that I knew I was going <laughs> to find that out of here. Absolutely but that's why he was so good. And when things go wrong, it's wonderful to know why. And when things go right, it's even better to know why. Lost him with an outside fastball. Stutes digging himself a massive hole. Trying to squander a 3 1 lead, a 4 1 lead, rather. Well, if we charted his pitches right now, they would be all arm side, waist high, or arm side high. The only balls he's gotten inside the lefties has been the breaking ball, and he has to come around that and pull it. 
When he collapses that back leg he might as well be throwing it downhill to the North Carolina dugout compared to home plate. Turney track says in this situation you get two or more runs in 73 percent of these situations and that would be great news for Carolina because they need two plus runs and they need them right now. And right now Pat Casey is looking at his bullpen and nothing's going on down there. Fedorovich comes up with the bases loaded. Oh for his last 15 and with the bases loaded as a team they are 0 for 5 so you've got two ways to look at it Fedorovich in a horrible slump as does the team or Fedorovich is due baseball is the only sport that says the guy's got to be due. Well when a batter's in a slump he's usually pulling off the ball and the pitch that Stooch is throwing right now the fastball in is the only place he can throw if Fedorovich gets one in there it's going to be right in his swing. The breaking ball could be flat if he lays off of that he's also got a good chance of getting a hit. One ball no strikes no place to put him. Ball. Inside again. Two balls no strikes Barry if you're a hitter what are you sitting on now. A well, pitch and a place. Well if you're a hitter and you're swinging well you're absolutely sitting on something. But in this particular situation Federobis he's just looking for a pitch that he can handle. You know nothing in particular but just something he's wherever he's comfortable that's where he's looking. Swing and a miss on a fastball. You know and when you're struggling you miss pitches like that. I mean that's a fastball right over the middle of the plate elevated and all you got to do is touch that ball. But when you're struggling a little bit all of a sudden there's a hole in that bat. Two balls and a strike four home runs this year for Fedorovich. He has better power than the numbers would tell you. He's been a clutch hitter all this year but not here in Omaha. Towards short could be two. Barney had a little trouble getting the ball out of his glove and only got one at second base. Fielder's choice Fedorovich drives in a run as Franck scores from third, and we've got first and third with one out now. Ball hit to Barney's right. Looks like he double clutches a little bit. Maybe took his eye off the ball and kind of lost the handle on the ball. Fedorovich is feeling good about himself. I mean, he got a run in there. You know, and Barney, I know he's probably upset that he didn't turn that double play, but these guys have been so good. You know, that just happens. That just happens in the play of the game. Maybe there was a little spin on that ball. Mm -hmm. Maybe it took a little different hop or something. But, you know, probably a double play that they could have turned, but it would have been bang, bang either way. And we already know Joey Wong has no problem making a turn against anybody in any situation, even if he's got to go parallel to the ground. Fedorov. Well that was the infielder's perspective. I'm pitcher that's got to be turned right there. Let's go. <laughs> Meet. Let's go meet. I got the ground ball to get myself out of a jam. I'm out here struggling. I've lost my mechanics and you can't make two on that. Let's go Meet. I agree with you buddy. <laughs> okay. I, I agree with you. I'm you keep trotting myself. in there to the mound I'm right now myself. saying to me I'm right. sorry throw me another one. I apologize. All right. You're and right. I know what Darwin Barney's thinking the same thing. You're right. <laughs> Swing and a miss. No balls and two strikes to Fedorov. He you know, grounded into a fielder's choice his last time up. Situation like that if you are a middle, middle infielder you obviously want to turn a double play but every ball that's hit and Barney's been very good at this you got to want it you want to make sure when you hear it this cliche is but it absolutely happens. Tried to check his swing but he did. Fedorov called out on a check swing. Major League Manager wants a player that makes the routine play routinely. Fedorov looked like he went a little past parallel. Absolutely. But guys, I mean, yeah, if you're a middle infielder, you're, you're thinking you want to make all the dynamic, the spectacular plays. And, and Darwin Barney and Joey Wong have absolutely done that. But the thing that they have done is they made every routine play, they've made them routinely. And that's what that's what people want. That's what a manager relies on. That's what Oral wants when he's pitching. Now Seth Williams is Stutes. 
trying to get out of a huge jam with two outs and runners at first and third. Isn't that right, Blow Dog? It is right, big guy. <laughs> I still want that double play ball, though. <laughs> get over it, me. <laughs> Pop back out of play. 0 and 2 to Williams. North Carolina rallied in the first, left two guys on. They had the bases loaded with nobody out here. If they don't get a big base hit here and produce something else, this would be another opportunity gone. Well, they've, they've done it all series. You know, psychologically, these guys have really struggled with situational hitting. It's just a matter of just touching the ball and do, doing something small, and then you have the snowball effect. That's what they got to do. They got to get the small things done in order to produce big results. For a pitcher, this has got to be a tremendous feeling of satisfaction, or if he can get out of this jam. Well, yeah, he's struggling mightily right here, and one pitch, he's out of it. Try to get him to chase the low curve. This is the kind of thing that if he can get in the dugout with this four to two lead and they can talk about the mechanical fix, maybe even an emotional fix of not trying so hard. Sometimes you don't know if it's the cart before the horse. Sometimes you calm the emotions down, the overthrowing, the mechanics clear out. Sometimes the mechanical fix then clears the mind. You just don't know which one it's going to be as a coach. Williams hit a fly ball to center his first time up. In the air to shallow left. Barney back on the grass says he wants it. He's called off. And the catch made in left field by John Wallace. So Stutz does get out of it. Bases loaded. Nobody out allows only one run and preserves the four to two lead. The frustration starting to build for the Eels. As usual it has been a great pleasure for us to be out here for the College World Series it just seems to get better each year bigger record crowds better and better baseball and a great storyline this year with Oregon State trying to repeat as national champions and the heels out here in full force. In the air to shallow right field off Leckelt's bat. And Garrett Gore will make the catch near the line. One out in the top of the fourth for Oregon State. In case you joined us late, Andrew Kerrigan, the closer for North Carolina, is already in the ballgame. He came on with two out in the second inning trying to shut down a rally and did. Fastball low here to Hopkins, who is one for two, or 0 oh for two, reached on an error his second time up. Well, Kerrigan's got some giddy up on that thing, doesn't he? Yes, he does. There's the starter, put Conan. Who struggled from the very beginning? Well, where Oregon State starters have gone six plus in every game they've played, only three out of seven. Three out of seven, no, of the starters for North Carolina have only gone two innings. And Pocono didn't make it that far, one and two thirds. On the ground of the shortstop, Horton. Two out quickly. But Conan against Louisville was the savior. He quieted the hot bats of the Cardinals, but only went one and two third, gave up two earned runs, and is on the hook to be the loser in the deciding game of the College World Series unless his teammates can come back for him. Here's Joey Wong, has a walk, and is 0 for 1 officially. So people at home thinking Kerrigan's a closer. How far can he go? On April 8th against Boston College, went four innings, gave up a hit, struck out three. And June 10th against South Carolina, went four innings, one hit, struck out three. 
Mike Fox said something about uh, he might you might see him in the second inning and he might go through the ninth. So maybe he's a little bit more optimistic than his closer is. First four games in the series when he combined six in the third. Well, in the one four inning outing he, he struck out three and walked three. That tells me that he threw a lot of pitches. He probably threw close to 75 pitches here today, already 31, 32 pitches. So he needs to get a little more efficient if he's going to have that long outing today. Struck him out a quick one, two, three inning for Kerrigan this time, and we'll go to the bottom of the fourth in a two run ball game. We're at the College World Series in Omaha. This ESPN2 telecast available on ESPN2 and in sparkling high definition on ESPN2 HD, presented by Olivia. Hope you're enjoying the beautiful pictures. It is four to two, bottom of the fourth, and here is Oral up in the Home Depot clinic. Well, last inning we saw Mike Stute struggling with his control, keeping the ball up, and a lot of it came from his back leg. Let's take a look at him there. You watch the back leg. When that back knee collapses, it shuts down the back hip, and now you are throwing uphill. Even the mound doesn't take that away from you. And so what you need to do is you need to stay tall on that back leg so the ball doesn't end up high and away. You collapse the back leg, you throw uphill, the ball ends up high and away. And what you need to do is you need to stay tall. You can't collapse that leg over the knee. You've got to keep it over the ball of your foot. And the other thing, he is looking for movement, and the movement is coming here. And what he needs to do is keep the back leg moving forward towards home plate, even very gradually and subtly, so he can feel like he has some momentum going to home. All right, Oral, thanks very much. And Stutes, sure the pitching coaches in the dugout trying to work with him on his mechanics in between innings. He got out of a huge jam in the last inning with the bases loaded, nobody out, allowed only one run and preserved the 4 2 lead. And let's see what he does against Seeger here. Kyle, the DH, starting the North Carolina fourth inning. They are the home team tonight, Oregon State. By virtue of being undefeated in their bracket was the home team in the opening game. They would flip a coin if there's a third game tomorrow. Seeger flew to left his first time up. for a base hit pass the pitcher. Let's go to Scott Reese in the studio a sports center 30 at 30 Scott. Scott thanks so much we're in the bottom of the fourth here a runner on Seeger after a single and the number eight man chat flack takes a big swing and a miss. The heels have had base runners today. But they've only pushed two of them across so far. Yeah, the runs that they've gotten are really more scratch runs they really haven't finished off their rallies and that's really disappointing as an offensive club. High in the air to shallow right. Joey Wong back on the grass for the first out of the inning. It's one thing to drive runs in with hits. It's another thing to trade outs for runs. And those are the kind of runs that Carolina has been getting. Those are the ones you expect to pick up, but they need those ones that just finish off rallies where it's a double in the gap and all of a sudden they've got some adrenaline flowing through their bench, which then equates to a lot of confidence. 
Barry, you saw them against Louisville when they were hitting all those home runs. They broke out of a batting slump. Well, the, the point was is that they were hitting home runs, and that's really the way they've been able to score their runs this entire uh, World Series. They haven't really manufactured and played and done the small things and played it runs from, as Oral said, really finishing the rallies. You know, a home run, in my opinion, a lot of times is a rally killer. It sure is. Even as a pitcher, when I've given up a home run, it's almost like a fresh start. You get back in. You, you pitch. You're in the rally, and you're pitching from the stretch. And all of a sudden, you get back to your windup. You start to feel like, okay, that's a fresh start. I'm in the beginning of an inning here. Maybe I even start an inning with an out when the mm -hmm. home run comes with an out. Garrett Gore with a runner at first. No balls and a strike. Gore strikeout victim. His first time up. We're in the bottom of the fourth and finally see some activity in the Oregon State bullpen as they get ready with Maxwell and Gerbevac just in case. Maxwell is the left hander. We have seen Gerbevac pitch in the College World Series. No balls and two strikes to Garrett Gore with Siegel at first and one out. Fouled straight back on a high fastball. Do you see any change in the mechanics this inning, Oral? A little better. The, the knee's still collapsing, but his rhythm is a little slower, which has given his arm a little bit of a chance to catch up. When you create all those angles, the big hip turn, the big knee collapse, the big shoulder turn, you then have to be patient enough for that all to unwind to get back to the plate. And in the olden days, pre-1968, when the mound was a, a steeper mound, you saw pitchers with those kind of mechanics because between the timing and the depth of the mound, those things could unwind. Pitch high. One ball, two strike. Of course, Bob Gibson took care of the height of the mound. Bob Gibson, Don Drysdale, scoreless streak. Uh, you know, Gibson, what was the ERA that year? It was in the ones, I think. 1.12. Denny McLean won 31 yeah. games. It was really the year of the pitcher. And then they decided to you know, bring in the aluminum bat and lower the mound. <laughs> well, 1.12 will do that to you. One of the great numbers in all of uh, all of sports. Yeah, you think I should know that number. <laughs> Well, everybody else was pretty much a fantasy. How can you have a 1.12 ERA for a season? Of course, Bob lives in Omaha. He was a basketball star at Creighton and has a street down here just uh, below the ballpark named for him. Two balls and two strikes to Garrett Gore. North Carolina trying to fight its way back into this down 4 2. Gore hanging in against Stutes. And is called out on a fastball that looked like it was off the plate inside. Boy, that's a break for Stutes. When you wear out one side of the plate, sometimes you get the borderline calls, but when you're this erratic, you really shouldn't. Mm. And right there, I know when the umpire sees that one later on the DVD that we supply them, he's going to be a little upset with that call. You can even see Canham pulling it in a few inches to frame it. Back to the top of the order to Franck, who has been on twice, hit by a pitch, and walked. His average holds at 321. Frank only hitting 250, but his on base percentage here is 500. Been hit four times and has six walks. Now he doesn't have to hit. Oh. And they'll take base runners any way they can get them. Well, Frank is hitting number one. He's an RBI guy, but he is a table setter. And the job of the uh, leadoff guys to get on base. However, you have to get on base. I mean, there's a lot of leadoff guys that play in the big leagues that don't hit 300, but their on base percentage is around 450. You know, they're in there. They're doing with the small things, and that's a very important part of the game. The small things are very important. Checking throw to first. 
Frank a seventh round draft pick of the Tampa Bay Devil Rays. And as you can tell by the outfits in the stands another perfect day for baseball in Omaha. Sun still a factor. Hanging over that pavilion and left. You know Mike Oregon State is playing conventional outfield defense right here with two outs and a man on first not looking. To give up any doubles you see how deep they are guarding the gaps and left center. Expecting Frank to go the opposite way but for a guy that doesn't have much power look how deep they're playing. They want two hits to score that run not one. Swing and a miss. Well if he can pull one into right center. He can run for about the next 45 seconds. Well the depth though allows them to cut the angle off so he's going to have to scorch it to get it through him because they are so deep. But you're right right center is the place they don't expect the ball to be hit. Two balls and two strikes to Frank. Stutes peering into Canham for the sign. Throw to first. Barry did you ever hit to the defense. Never hit to the defense actually but you know like when you play a certain teams very good at pitching with their defense very consistent with their defense and Atlanta comes to mind you know with Smoltz and and Avery and Glavin and Maddox if they were playing you away pretty much for certain they'll pitch you away that fastball was poured right down the middle for a called strike three fans the last two men Darwin Barney Oregon State's outgoing shortstop will be coming up this inning. Andrew Miller was a star pitcher for the Tar Heels of North Carolina right now he's pitching for Detroit on Sunday night baseball. We asked him what his experience at the College World Series has meant to his major league career. Yeah just the experience of you know pitching tough games and, and big games you know it's a little different in college than it is here but you know pitching against a rival or something like that you know just taking the excitement and you know having to pitch under those conditions and uh, Luckily I got to experience that quite a bit at Carolina and carry that over to here. He has pitched two and a third tonight for the Tigers uh, without giving up a run. And boy when he has uh, made his progress through minor leagues to join that pitching staff it's pretty good stuff. Well it is. I remember doing Wednesday night baseball last year his first big league outing against the Yankees. So he faced the likes of uh, Cabrera and Jeter and Damon I remember got out of that inning but from college ball. Short minor league stint to facing the Yankees. You see a lot of that nowadays. You see a lot of these younger guys making an impact in uh, in Major League Baseball really early. Miller put up some enormous numbers last year. Struck out 133, winning 13 games, was a consensus first team All American. Well, there was talk around Tiger Camp that he would make the team. I think Jim Leland wanted him to make a team. But they're really looking after the fact that uh, they want to look after their young arms. But Leland is a talent oriented manager. He will take talent over experience anytime. Lisman hit by a pitch as Kerrigan came inside. Let's go to Kyle Peterson. Thanks, Mike. And talking to Scott Forbes about Andrew Kerrigan on the mound today, I asked him how far can he go. He said, well, we don't think we want to take him any longer than 70 pitches. Oral mentioned earlier, he's gone four innings twice this year. When I talked to Kerrigan before the ball game, asked him how far he thought he could go. He said, well, I think I can go four. And then he looked at me and smiled and said, at least four. He said, if we need me, I can go further than that. <laughs> well, right now, they still need him. Of course, if he goes longer than four, you pretty much get the idea he's toast for tomorrow. Should there be a game three. But you've got to get to tomorrow. Now you'll do funny things when championships are involved. I went yeah. seven innings against the Mets and came in relief the next day <laughs> to get the save. I actually lied to Tommy Lasorda too to get there. I went down and said the, how you feeling. Well Gibson <laughs> hit the home run in the 12th the next day and I ran in and got my spikes. I went down to the bullpen and said Cressy Tommy got me up. Cressy didn't have time to call down and cross check it. I warmed up. He called and told Tommy I was ready and he goes Bulldog where is he, he goes down here. How's he throwing great. All right keep him hot. I came in and got Kevin McReynolds out for the last out. Well let me ask any ramifications after that. Did you hurt yourself. 
Well, I didn't hurt myself that year, but a year later, uh, yeah, I had a little reconstructive surgery. I got three bone anchors in that shoulder, and they, they reconstructed my labrum, but fortunately came back from it. Dr. Frank Job did a great job. Was that a result of your uh, dedication to uh, getting a save in that last game? I don't know, but the capsule is something that can be stretched out, and they told me mine looked like a balloon with, like, a hernia. <laughs> That's not good. No, that's, no, that's why you that play infield. Yeah. That's why if you can play, if you're athletic and you can play another position, oh. play another position. Not that at, not that pitchers aren't athletic. I said, but if you're athletic no, and no. can play another position, you said play another you're doing position. a little moonwalking right you now. You said big guy. if you are athletic, meaning and can play if you're not, another you'd be a position. Pitcher. <laughs> In, in Bob Gibson's hometown, I wouldn't be getting on pitchers right now. He might be close by, and he'd have something to say about that. Let's get out to Aaron Andrews, Aaron. <laughs> Mike, just to add on what you guys were talking about with Andrew Kerrigan, how long he can go. It's funny, during that last half inning, Pat Casey got his team together in the dugout and told them, look, let's continue to stay lo loose and let's remember who we have on the mound right now. We're facing a closer. He can't go that long, so let's stretch it out. Let's make him tired out there. Pat Casey thinking a little different from uh, what old Mike Fox is saying, Andrew Kerrigan, too. Well, the wheels are turning in both yeah. dugouts. Well, if you try to see a lot of pitches against the starter to get the middle relievers so that the middle reliever can't set up the closer, if the closer's in this early, you're going to try and wear him down and see a few pitches also. Pitch foul back. Tell you what, you got a closer on the mound throwing 94, and you're going up there and saying, listen, this might be my only opportunity to get a ball I can hammer, a ball that I can hit. So. You know, I don't know about these guys, but I didn't like hitting 0 2 or behind in the in the count with a guy that's got Kerrigan's kind of stuff. So is that the kind of strategy that came from a manager and went one in one ear out the other? Got to be realistic. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it sounds good. Propaganda is propaganda, man. Oh. When you're in there battling, it, it you you got to do what you got to do in order to be successful. And taking pitches against a guy that's got 95 and. You know, with a snapdragon and a tremendous slider, and you just, you just, that, that's just not practical. How about bunting somebody with 95 like they're asking Darwin Barney right here? Well, we saw Mitch Canham try to do it as well, and it, that's not easy to do either. First and second, nobody out. The heart of the order, the heart of this ball club. As you get Lisman, Canham, and Barney up, first two have reached, hit by a pitch and a base on balls. Yeah, John Wallace on deck. Coincidence when Oklahoma State finally fell behind for the first time in the tournament, but it, no coincidence that the rally was started by Canham and Barney right away. Oregon State. If I say Oklahoma. Yes. I'm getting tired. We've been here a long time. <laughs> Low. Two, one. Two balls and a strike. Wooten is in the North Carolina bullpen. They have to go somewhere else than Kerrigan. He came on in the second. Go, come on. In the box. Their concentration right now is let's get out of this inning and come up and hit again. Chopped up the middle, could be two to second for one, on to first, double play. Turned very well by that North Carolina defense on a good opportunity to get to, and they do. The Taylor May double play right there. Darren Barney hits an hard one hopper to the shortstop. Horton and Gore turn it very nicely. Double play, pitcher's best friend. Lisman gets to third, and one of the few times that Darwin Barney doesn't come through. And now they want to go out to talk to Kerrigan. I mean, they're walking a fine line here. Do they want to get him out and go to somebody else and perhaps have a chance at bringing him back tomorrow? Or do you just string him out here thinking he is your best chance to get to tomorrow? And he's going to stay. I think it's a delicate balance actually uh, you know I think you I think coach Mike Fox has so much confidence and respect for these guys that he's really going to probably let them tell him 
how they're feeling and, and and what they think about the prospects of playing tomorrow and you know and if Kerrigan will you know join the parade if they have an opportunity to play tomorrow if they'll be able to come back tomorrow. Wallace now with a runner third and two out. Well Tommy Lasorda listened to oral he had surgery the next couple of months a couple of years <laughs> fouled out of play. Now something went on right there as far as the bunt and the sig sing signals and might have looked through it might have disregarded it. Somebody missed something. And most of the times that situation that was probably a bunt a bunt signal that uh, that was missed right there. This one is lined to left base hit and that'll get a run home. Wallace with the base hit. Frank was coming in from left and just couldn't get there. And it's 5 2. Well, not trying to do too much with it, just placing it out there to left field. A little base hit, little RBI. Makes you feel a little better about the inning. Scratching that run off of Kerrigan. Wallace drives in Lisman, and it is now a four to one situation in favor of Oregon State with the win probability statistic. And the score five to two, leaving it up to Sanchi with two outs and a runner on. So Kerrigan is touched and there is a timeout. There was a balk call but the home plate umpire overruled at saying time had been called. Kerrigan still getting up there at 94 miles an hour but that was well out of the strike zone. Oh, what signs do you look for from from Kerrigan now to say, okay, maybe this guy's getting a little tired and you can't? Uh, what do you look for from a pitcher? Well, the ball, first of all, usually elevated. You know that means that the legs might be getting tired, and what happens with the legs is the leg kick gets shorter, and the shorter the leg kick, then the arm path, that same arm path, is late. So you can either say, okay, Good lift job, your leg higher, or take a shorter arm path. And every pitcher has a hump inning usually as far as fatigue comes in and Kerrigan's not used to going through those hump innings when all of a sudden your energy levels change because being a closer most of his outings are within his full burst. Fifty two pitches so far for Andrew Kerrigan the All American closer. Fifty three is out of the strike zone and it's three and one to Scott Sanchi out of Vancouver Washington. Well, it's important for Kerrigan to try and get through this inning he might be able to squeak another inning out of himself. They come in get a few runs that gives them a little adrenaline Mike Fox decides to leave him in and that extra inning of getting a zero out of him next inning could be huge in this game. Strike call. So he's on the bubble of coming out of the game right here. You know it gives up another hit or this inning spirals away from him. But it could be the difference between him finishing this inning or actually going another inning in a third. He has three saves in the College World Series. This one's hit right back up the middle for a base hit. Three saves in the series five career in the College World Series. That's how successful he has been here tying the record of the great Houston Street. Of course this is not a save situation. He is on trying to save their lives as far as the College World Series and this ball is a shot back up the box. Yeah, he's lucky that that ball I don't know if it hit him in the leg or not but to see a two seamer. And it was a shot right back up the middle Sanchi did a nice job of hitting right back up the middle. Very nice job right there. And, you know we start seeing some of the, uh, the signs of him getting tired. And maybe a ball out over the uh, over the plate. Back to back singles for Wallace and Sanchi runners at first and third for Leonardton. He's 0 for 2 grounded into a double play and hit a fly ball to center field for an out. Still hitting 313 on the season. 
ball. That one's outside. A ball and a strike. It is 5 2 Oregon State. Every time North Carolina makes even a little bit of a move, Oregon State has found a way to answer. And they've had the answer to everybody since the end of the regular season, a season in which they barely got into the field of 64, had to go to UCLA in the final series of the year and win two out of three. And they knew it in advance. If, they're not, if they weren't going to win two out of three at UCLA, they could expect to be at home even as the defending champions. But the fact that they were the defenders and they had played such a great early season schedule helped them get in. They had a Pac-10 record of 10 and 14. Nobody has ever had a sub 500 record in their conference and won the College World Series. But then Oregon State has had a number of firsts in the last couple of years. And the Zesto's milkshakes have arrived. Mm -mm. Two and two fastball sky to right. Deep but not deep enough into that Sunfield and fighting it off is Fedorov to make the catch. So Kerrigan is out of it. And there's a little exchange of words between uh, Oregon State and North Carolina as Kerrigan goes to the dugout. Slugs this one down the left field line and clears the wall for a home run. Give me one shot at my life today. One shot at my life today. I don't want to be a stranger. A lot of smiling going on for the Beavers of Oregon State as they are up here in the bottom of the fifth. Here's our Coke Zero game track. 5-2 as we go to the bottom of the fifth for North Carolina at bat. Barney a two-run home run. Stutes has gone four, allowed two runs. Pocona only went one and two-thirds and was roughed up early. Concentrating already. A beaver baby with an eye on the field in the bottom of the fifth. Fastball for a called strike to Josh Horton, the number two man in the order. Two, three, four scheduled to hit here in the fifth for the Heels. They have to win today to force the rubber game tomorrow. Horton has two singles and is now 10 for 25 in the College World Series. Waste of breaking ball outside. That's Mike Stutes 75th pitch. It's a lot of pitches for somebody who's only struck out four people. Still only has recorded four innings of outs. In the air to left center. Twisting toward the left fielder Wallace makes the catch. Kyle at the end of last inning uh, there was a confrontation between the a uh, pitcher in the third base coast a little war of words huh yeah just a little bit and we had talked about it earlier I think for this entire Carolina team right now you're seeing an Oregon State team that plays a different style of baseball you talk about the West Coast offense in football this is kind of the West Coast offense and defense in baseball they slow things down they try to to really get the other team off of their game and to some extent it's happened I think what's key there though as this ball is hit high and deep to right back and it's gone. Justin Ackley turned on one and ripped it into the stands. It's 5 3. Ackley 
Ackley wasted no time. He's two for two tonight. What a great swing on this kid. He does have an absolutely fantastic swing. As we talked a little earlier, he was struggling a little early, went to the cage, just talked to Mike Fox and made a couple adjustments, just keeping his front side in and letting that bat head get to the ball. Very little waste, wasted motion. Really nice swing. Fedorovich stands in. He has a sacrifice and a fielder's choice driving in a run. But still only two hits in Omaha in 24 trips. One out in the fifth. They have closed the gap to two. Fouled off the catcher's mask. Two balls and a strike. Fedorov is on deck. Sounds like the Russian national team. You've got Fedorovich and then Fedorov. It's the scoring line. <laughs> Center and a left wing. Curveball got him. Two balls, two strikes. Well, Mike Stutz is battling out there. He had a so so outing against Arizona State and garnered a win today. He's really battling through this one too. He's fought control problems. He's been almost effectively wild. But remember every Oregon State starter has gone six plus innings in this championship. So they have got some starting pitching even if it doesn't with their best stuff they've battled through. Fedorovich spoiled that last one to stay alive at two and two. Kerrigan still doesn't look happy on the Tar Heel bench. Breaking pitch hit toward short. Barney gobbles up another one and throws him out. Kyle, let's uh, finish your observations about that confrontation. You know, when Kerrigan got in the dugout, you saw a distinct change in this dugout because for once in the last three innings, they were fired up. It just seemed like every time that hitters had come up in big spots and guys would not come through with that double that you guys have talked about in the booth, a little bit more air came out of this dugout. When Kerrigan kind of got into it off the way, on the way off the field, the entire feeling in this dugout changed. I think it's one of the things they needed because this dugout has been silent for the last three innings. Well obviously they need something and they should have gotten a little boost from Ackley's shot that always gives you hope certainly it does but that, that's the reason Mike Fox put Kerrigan in the game you know you're looking for someone to spark this club there is no tomorrow if you don't spark the club today then it's not going to happen tomorrow so I mean you know Andrew Kerrigan in my opinion has done the job he's obviously done it for him at the end of the game but his job was to fire up the forces and that's what he's done. Now they need some offense to continue that a called strike on Fedorov. What is it about emotion Barry that that all of a sudden gets an offense going. Well you know everybody gets goes you know out there grinding of course you're grinding but you know I think it's about every we talked about winning every single pitch and that, you know you, you, you kind of have to really focus on. As Fedorov singles to right. You have to focus on every single pitch and you know. During the course of the game if you're losing a little bit and, and maybe you're you know you're getting beaten you're starting to feel sorry for yourself a little bit then all of a sudden it's not every single pitch it's every at bat or every out. Well when you the emotions come back in you refocus and you say hey listen you know I don't care he is not going to beat me on any pitch. That means even if I'm going to take a ball that I'm going to take it in a position where I could have hit it or if I'm going to make a play I'm going to make that play as best I can. It's just focus. Here's Seth Williams who was tied for second on the club with nine home runs is driven in 42 hasn't shown much out here except for one home run only four hits in 22 at bats two fly ball outs today and his season's average has dropped to 290. You know, I love hearing Barry talk about the emotion of the game and what it changes in a dugout because 
big league players get picked on so much about concentration. You know, if you make that much money, you're, you should be concentrating every pitch, but they're still human beings. Well, money has really nothing to do with it. It's your personality. Ball. I mean, why should a guy that gets paid $5 million be expected to concentrate more than a guy who makes 500000 they They both need to be in the ball game as much as possible. Well, and it equates to this game, too, because, you know, how could you say Carolina wasn't concentrating or wasn't emotionally into it? This is the championship game for them. They could be eliminated. You know, it's always, it's uh, it's about the individual. Noro talked about it. It's about the individual, and it's, you know, it's kind of a pride thing. Regardless if you're making any money or not making money, when you, every time you put on a uniform, you know, you're representing, of course, the name on that uniform, but you're representing yourself. So it's a pride factor when you go out there. Three and one to Williams. That's inside ball four. They were running on three to three and one. Fedorov is into second. Tying runs are aboard. Gerbevac heating up again in the Oregon State bullpen. And here comes Dan Spencer, the pitching coach and associate head coach. To come out and talk to Stutz, who's now thrown 92 pitches through four and two thirds. Of course, one thing pitchers really want to do is go five. You don't get the win without five. And pitching coaches love to let them go five if they can. But on a situation like this, where it's not really about statistics, it's about the ring, every inning will be like the ninth inning for. Oregon State and Stutes will stay on with two out and two on for Kyle Seeger the DH who singled his last time up he's one for two kid with gap power who hits well to all fields ball. one ball no strikes and the Sun almost a non factor now, just barely affecting line drives in right field. This is that rally that North Carolina has not finished off. This one started late with two outs, but this is the key hit that they've been looking for for a long time. Strike called. Well, Oral, you're right. They had the rally in the first, resulted in only one run. They had the rally in the third, resulted in only one run. They have a rally here after the solo home run from Ackley, and they've got to push something across. A big inning is a key for them to stay alive here. Ball. Two balls and a strike. Boy, and you just know Stutes is on the shortest. Of leashes right now. There's a lot of hope in his pitches right now. He's not really attacking and saying, I'm going to get you out. He's hoping to get the hitters out. You can tell that he is kind of lost out there when he cannot see that his catcher's trying to hold him up. The umpire has stepped out, the hitter's gone, and he's still going to deliver a pitch. Maxwell, the left hander, has joined Gerbevac again. Down to first. Leonardton will make the play unassisted. They're out of another jam. We've played five full. It is 5 3. The third run coming on Dustin Ackley's home run deep into the stands and right.
you're watching the NCAA College World Series Championships presented on ESPN by Dick Sporting Goods here in Omaha over on ESPN at Sunday Night Baseball where the Detroit Tigers are nothing nothing in the fifth against the Atlanta Braves at Turner Field Andrew Miller at bat and pitching for the Tigers tonight Detroit 2 and 0 in the series going into the rubber game this evening. Miller the star for North Carolina a year ago and this is the star closer Andrew Kerrigan who came on in the second inning tonight has gone three and third allowed two runs and the two runs the margin in this game it's five three Leckelt will lead it off in the Oregon State sixth. if they win they win back to back NCAA championships in a year where anyone outside of Corvallis did not expect them to be any kind of a contender for a national championship and that one hits Leckel. This pitch from Kerrigan right here. Now that that ball that's a ball up and in that's 93 94 miles an hour you have very little chance but you see him actually turn turn away from the pitch. Other pitches that have been a little more over the plate we've seen a guy actually keep his elbow out there and not even make an attempt to move away or move it a little further out. See so guys actually roll into the strike zone. Now Chris Hopkins. Good butter until that one pops it straight up and act like comes in from first base to make the play so a failed sacrifice in Oregon State for one of the rare times does not execute. Well when a guy throws 94 95 miles an hour it is very difficult to bunt the ball especially if the technique is not there and that particular time the hands were above the barrel of the bat and the ball just went straight up in the air. You got to get that barrel of the bat above the hands and out in fair territory to force that ball down. Now Joey Wong with a runner at first one out we're in the Oregon State sixth inning. I want to thank our producer Scott Matthews and our director Scott Johnson for a brilliant job that they have done out here for nearly two weeks. And our crew which just you don't know how hard these men and women work. It is a grind but they love it and that's why they're so good at it. And our hats are off to these people. Way to go Kent. Outside and high. I don't think North Carolina would like you to be thanking our staff. They want them to come back tomorrow. Oh, well this is a precaution. <laughs> <laughs> and most of these uh, men and women have been out coming out here for years. Yep. Sign up early hope to be here. They're rewarded for their great work by getting an opportunity to come back year after year. And we just can't thank them enough as Joey Wong gets a base hit or gets a base on balls. Paul and Karen Griego who have been great hosts to us throughout the years. Wonderful baseball fans. And this may be it for Kerrigan. Asking a lot of a guy to come out of the bullpen when he's used to coming in throwing between one third of an inning and maybe one plus to go a long way in this pressure packed situation. It's already equaled his the longest outing of his career. And there's the signal Kerrigan will be done. And you get the feeling if there is a game three he would be available for that one as well. So they're going to take him out now while he's still got something left. Cheer for North Carolina as they trail five three here in the sixth will be Rob Wooten who is setting a College World Series record with his sixth appearance here in Omaha and his 47th for North Carolina. That is also a record. 
and until yesterday he had pitched in every NCAA tournament game this year. The guys put up some sparkling numbers too. A sinker slider he's got a little split change. He is a workhorse see that mouth guard in there he's using. Lisman pops it up. Two outs. Kerrigan done. Closer came on, gave up a couple of runs out of the bullpen. Three and two thirds. Four hits, a couple of runs, struck out three, struck out two and walked three. Not his sharpest outing. But then under unusual circumstances. Well, he's been pitching a lot lately, but the thing that he did do is come in and say, listen, guys, we are not finished. You know, we still have an opportunity. We we still have a, a fight in us. And he showed some fight when he was coming off the coming off the mound uh, that last inning, you know, yelling at the third base coach uh, about whatever it is they were going back and forth about. So, you know, his job as a leader on this team is to incite the guys and you know, set the precedent and set the standard. He's done that quite well. You just saw a glimpse of Woodard warming up in the Carolina bullpen, one of their outstanding starters. So they'll go as deep in that pen as they need to to try to force a game three. Canham a single twice and walked tonight. Well, this is a huge at bat right here because two runs is nothing for the Carolina offense. But if Canham can get a big hit and score two here, even pop one out of here, all of a sudden the game gets out of reach again. So. Oh. That one's high and away. Canham could have gone to the into professional baseball a year ago. He was draft eligible as a sophomore. But he had thoughts of coming back as well and when negotiations over what he thought he should get and what the uh, major league clubs were willing to offer he decided I'll just come back and uh, try to win another one and lead these young kids and lo and behold here he is in the College World Series with a chance to get a second ring. Uh, you know he's really he's really appreciative of the things that he's been uh, given. At Oregon State, you know, with all the problems that he had, the personal tragedy that he had. Exactly. And, uh, you know, Coach Casey has really taken him under his wing, and, you know, this is just his way of giving back. Struck him out. Canham is gone, and the inning is over. We'll go to the bottom of the sixth. North Carolina fighting for its very baseball life. Down by two, and Kerrigan cheering him on. Back at the College World Series, the score 5 3 Oregon State over North Carolina. Bottom of the sixth, here's Aaron. Mike, head coach Pat Casey told me he still wants Mike Stutes out on the mound for Oregon State. He said these re the reasons why these next two hitters in Chad Flatt and Garrett Gore, he said they're 0 for 4 against Stutes so far tonight. He said he still thinks he's throwing good stuff, but like men Mike mentioned earlier, he's on a very short leash. Hey guys, how are those milkshakes up there, huh? <laughs> those Thanks are delicious, Aaron. <laughs> You can have what's left. We'll send that down. Be fine. You don't look like you've ever had a milkshake, Aaron. Bottom of the sixth time starting to get short for North Carolina, and the screws will start to tighten a little bit. Flack, Gore, and Frank to hit here in the Tar Heel sixth. Well. You know North Carolina has consistently played from behind uh, this entire postseason. Uh, we saw it even in their in their regional tournament. Um, but you know when you get to the late in late third of the game like we are right now uh, you, people have a tendency to kind of you know, try a little harder and, and when you do try a little harder it is so much tougher to be successful. The grip on the bat gets a little tighter. Swing gets a little slower. That's right. Longer. Because of that. Yep. 
Flack 0 for 2 and fooled by that pitch and goes down swinging. This is a sharp breaking ball. Stutz does a nice job getting on top. We've seen a lot of breaking balls of his get flat, but right now he's made a nice adjustment getting that spin going a little bit more. 12 to 6 on the clock. Garrett Gore, who has been a strikeout victim twice tonight, stands in. You know, that's something that Earl, Earl just talked about. He's talked about that nice breaking ball. That that particular breaking ball right there, in my opinion, is called what we call as non-pitchers. We call that a finisher. You know, he threw that breaking ball, as did O. He threw that breaking ball with two strikes that starts in the strike zone and breaks out of the strike zone. So tempting with two strikes, you can't let it go. And then by the time you commit to swinging, it's out of the strike zone. Stutes with 102 pitches and this ball is smoked to the gap in right center field over Fedorov's head Gore wheels into second with a stand up double. Well Garrett Gore got all of that one here's the number nine hitter a kid with not much power and he gave that one a ride to the opposite field. See a fastball just down and Garrett Gore does, does a nice job of inside out in that ball. And they didn't expect him to play to hit it that deeply. You see Sanchi didn't didn't think he was going to be able to drive that ball over his head but he surely did. Dan Spencer on his way out. We'll check on the pitching change when we come back to Omaha it's a two run game. Back at the College World Series presented on ESPN by Dick Sporting Goods. Glad you could join us for game two of the finals. And if Oregon State wins, it's over. If North Carolina wins, we go to game three tomorrow night at 7 Eastern. And here's the exchange from one pitcher to another, a little different than you would see in Major League Baseball. A little cultural difference. Pitcher to pitcher instead of pitcher to manager, manager to pitcher. Possibly do kind of remove the emotions that are running through these young men's bodies when they get taken out of a game. Well, I don't know Give about these. Teammates. <laughs> yeah I don't know about these young men but I've seen Lou Pinella come to the mound with Norm Charlton or Rob Dibble or Randy Myers the nasty boys out there on the mound and asked for that ball and they almost knocked his arm off <laughs> giving them the ball they were so mad that he took him out. So I think there's definitely some reason why they are not handing that ball to that manager. <laughs> Maxwell will come on. For Stutes, Maxwell hasn't been in a ball game since June 2nd. 5'9, 180 pound senior, and he'll face Reed Frank. North Carolina has had a base runner in every inning but one, the second. But they still only have three runs. Frank has walked, been hit by a pitch, and struck out. He represents the potential tying run. Oh. Maxwell misses outside. Lefty against lefty in this situation. And plenty of arms ready in that Oregon State bullpen. Got a fastball in on him at 88. The fundamentals of getting big hits is something the heels have been unable to do. Three for their last 31 with runners in scoring position. That's under 100 for a batting average in those clutch situations. This one hit in the air down the left field line, twisting foul into the seats. Less than 100, but they are in the championship series. You know, these guys, uh, you know, a testament to their resiliency. They have struggled in situations. And, and Coach Mike Fox said that they do, they really do work on these things. It just so happens that right now it's not happening for them. But they have been able to put a couple of rally, semi rallies together, hit the long ball in order to put themselves in this, this situation. Hey, they're, they're one swing away from tying up this ball. Exactly. Game. That's the beauty of baseball. They're two base hits away from taking the lead by getting two hits in the clutch situation. Oh. Even after all those struggles. 
What does the win probability say now? It was 80 20. Now it's down to 70 30. As the Heels cut a three run lead to two, have a runner in scoring position here with one out. That two be, balls and two strikes to front. Would that be down to 70 30 or up? I down. Guess, I, guess it's, I guess it's which uh, which side you're looking at it from, right? Good point. Fouled out of play again. Up for North Carolina, That's down right. for Oregon State. <laughs> right. That's right. Frank takes a big breath. Mike Fox in this situation last year when he had the hammer. Won the first game and then saw Oregon State come back to take the next two. Now he's trying to do the same thing to the Beavers. In the air. Straight away right. Sanchi makes the catch. Gore tags and will make it to third easily. But two out. So once again, no hits in a clutch situation. And now it's up to Horton here in the bottom of the six with two outs. Every at bat. Every at bat, every pitch becomes a little, has a little more intensity to it. That's why it was, it's so important to be able to cash in on these little runs right here. You know, it's uh, now unfortunately there's two outs and you don't have an opportunity just to hit a ground ball or just touch the ball in order to drive this run in. You know, those comp, those those situations early in the ball game can come up to hate to hurt you later in the ball game. Well, as a ball player, no matter how optimistic you are, if your team is three for 32, and he hit him, if your team is three for 32 in clutch situations, people that don't have a bat in their hands, and even the guys that are hitting are sitting there saying, oh, well, how are we going to mess this up? You know, what are we going to do to kill this route? The well, last inning they had a two out home run, then they got first and second two out, failed to get the hit, a little ground ball to first base, end of the inning. Here again two out first and third left handed hitter up now with that hole at first base because of the runner at first even a larger opportunity to score with two outs. Maxwell the left hander staying on to pitch to Ackley who homered his last time up. If he could do it again North Carolina would grab the lead. So many times no hits. With runners in scoring position. Can the freshman All-American, the guy with an unbelievable future in front of him, come through again? That's Fedorovich on deck. But Ackley is the key guy. You just get the feeling it's up to him. Low fastball. Last time up, smoked it. Very Boy. little weights, there very little, uh, yeah, very little movement in his swing, just very efficient right to the ball. He's in a very good count right now. He's seen some good pitches. 2 and 0. Oh. and left Ackley hit it on the nose but Carolina's rally is wasted again end of six two run ball game. We will go to the seventh inning at the College World Series that's the facade of Rosenblatt Stadium the home of the College World Series. The shrine of this game where Oregon State is leading North Carolina five to three. Darwin Barney from Beaverton Oregon will lead it off. Oregon State trying to win back to back national championships. Barney's two run homer is the difference in this ballgame. First time up a line drive to left. That at bat smoked it and got it over 
at left field wall by a couple of feet. Only his fifth home run of the year. Darwin Barney we talked about it before he's a guy that can change the game and has changed the game uh, with his glove and chipping in on the offensive end. Breaking ball got him. Wooten with a strikeout. Let's go to Scott Reese. He has a sports center 30 at 30. Thank you Scott was watching uh, the updates on McGowan's bid for a no hitter. I, I think everybody loves to see even the home team that you know uh, the visiting team everybody is excited about a guy with a chance for a no hitter or a perfect game. You just love to see people accomplish the unusual and baseball is such a great stage for it. Yeah. Were you there in Cincinnati when Tom Browning had his. Yes. Were you playing shortstop for yes, that one. Yes it was. Yes the perfect game. Perfect game. Yes yeah. it was a perfect game. I don't know if that was Belcher. against the Dodgers. Yeah, it was against the Dodgers. <laughs> Belcher. This ball down in the corner and off the wall, and it gets away from Federoff. Wallace is on his way to third with a triple. <laughs> Federoff went back to get it, could not field it coming off the wall, and Federoff smoked that one off of Rob Wooten. Wallace gets a pitch in a little bit and bangs it off that right field wall. And you see was it a breaking ball. And you can see him when he sees that ball off the wall he's thinking three bags. And he can run pretty good right there. It's his third Ooh. triple of the year two of them have come at the College World Series. Triples are lots of fun, but they're lots of work too. <laughs> You're a little gassed when you get to third. Yeah. Get you. Now Wooten, his job is to prevent that guy from getting in from third with only one out, and he's facing Sanchi. The infield comes in to cut off the run. You got to take a shot right here to try and strike him out with an 0-2 count. Oh. Tries a fastball outside, missed. Or as a pitcher, or are you trying to do something different with the ball when the infielder's in as opposed to regular when the infield's back in this situation? Chopped over the head of the second baseman, Garrett Gore. And that's where having the infield in can get you in trouble. A routine ground ball that otherwise is an easy out goes for a base hit and drives in a run. Well, he got what he wanted. He got the ground ball. He kept the ball down. Got him to top it, but he topped it a little too strongly off the dirt there. Whoa, I think it hit the seam between the grass and the dirt to get that kind of kick. Because that wasn't chopped right in front of the plate. But that's a big run nonetheless for Oregon State. 6 3, and Leonardton comes up. Every run makes it just that much tougher for North Carolina to mount a comeback, especially considering the problems they have had with getting hits in the clutch. And the win probability has leaped to nine to one. Nice bunt down the third baseline. Pitcher throws, throws it away. Wooten throws it into right field, runners at second and third. And at critical times the North Carolina pitchers have been their own worst enemies. That's three of those plays in two nights. The Tyler Trice threw a couple balls away yesterday. Gets off the mound real well on this bunt. Really doesn't have plenty of time but it's still a routine play. 
just launches that. That was bad footwork as far as his weight shift. He didn't crow hop towards first base. He just kind of eased into picking up the ball. He should have hustled a little farther and then had some momentum on his throw, but he hung back on that back leg and threw it into right field. And those are the small fundamental things. I mean, you, you, you talk about a, a ball that rolls 15 feet. And you know it changes everything if you can't make that play and you consistently don't make that play you put too much pressure on your team. Well that's what we mentioned at the beginning of the broadcast that North Carolina's downfall when they have not played well here in Omaha has been the fundamentals. We saw it again tonight. They don't sacrifice well they don't bunt well as a team. Uh, they have not hit well in clutch situations and they have not made the routine plays you got to make. Yeah they haven't manufactured runs they've had guys on base uh, but they have not been able to move the guys over and just touch the ball in situation when there's a man in scoring position. It's been uh, the way they've hit the, uh, the way they've scored is by hitting a home run and they eventually you're going to cool down you're not going to get that home run every every time but you can touch the ball every time when there's a man on third base if the infield is back you know those simple fundamental things make huge difference in the in the in the uh, ball game. You probably saw Scott Forbes the pitching coach tap Rob Wooten on the chest and say you OK and Wooten says yeah I am I'm ready to go. Well, this guy's a veteran five, pitcher. And a really Morning. good one. He's, he's in a huge jam now big jam and made a huge impact on their program for the three years he's been there. Leonardton on at second. Sanchi is at third, and Leckelt, the number nine hitter, still looking for his first hit tonight. And is four for 16 in the College World Series, hitting 250. <laughs> Strike called on a breaking pitch. Leckelt hit with a runner on third and less than two outs earlier in the game. Brooms Back are out. In the second inning. Brooms are out. Yeah. OSU looking for the sweep. Bunt out in front, not a suicide squeeze, and that time Wooten left no doubt, picked it up and rifled a strike to the first baseman. That's the second out. I think that's a missed squeeze signed by the runner or something. It's like, where's the runner? Yeah. Got the bunt down. Well it was not a suicide squeeze yep. you get the feeling that it was supposed to be. Well, there was a cross up when Darwin Barney hit earlier yes. we saw Pat Casey's reaction. Now we've got a cross up and another signal right there. And Leckel is saying I saw the squeeze sign. <laughs> I did my part didn't I I tell you I, I'm telling you man when the game gets down to the end like this and, and the championship is on the line it becomes so much tougher to do the things that you've just taken for granted throughout the season little check swing back up the middle Gore behind second can't make a play actually that the first baseman wasn't there in order for Gore to throw the ball that actually came in. He and, became a spectator. And oh. I don't know what happened, but it looked like he came in like it was almost a bunt opportunity. And Garrett Gore made a great play to catch the ball behind the mound. He went to go throw the ball to first base, and there was nobody there. Sometimes your mind just freezes. And remember, Ackley was an outfielder before this year started, ended up with a sore arm. They had to move him into first base and oh. they said he's gotten comfortable but he came a little bit of a spectator there and got too far away from the bag. I tell you what I think happened there. I think he thought that ball was going to go to center field and he's the cutoff man to I home agree. plate. So it looked like he was running to be the cutoff man and then he saw that the second baseman caught it. So he got caught in between. That's there. exactly what he was doing. But then he wasn't at first base and they're probably lucky that Gore didn't throw it and throw it in the dugout. That's right. Holy cow talk about fundamentals it is just coming apart. Hit toward the alley and speared what a catch by Williams. Holy cow Seth Williams on the dead run backhands it and saves another couple of runs. This ball was crushed. What a catch wow. by Seth Williams in center field to Rob Hopkins. 
He hit it like a bullet. What an inning. It is 7-3 Oregon State. Let's go down to Aaron Andrews. Well, Mike, Mitch Canham has played in the last three College World Series. Unfortunately, his mother never had the opportunity to see him play here. But this year, for the very first time, his grandparents made the trip from Oregon to Omaha, not only to watch their grandson play, but to remember his mother. My freshman year of college, I, I lost my mom. Uh, to a drug overdose. Kimmy Lee Canham. She was a very wonderful person. She was an outgoing person, like her son. Uh, we were all devastated by it. Uh, there's still a big hole in our lives because she's not there, and we all miss her. And it just, you know, it's one of the things you have to get through because it happened. And since then, it's, uh, you know, it's been a, a challenge for me to to focus on baseball and stuff, but you know what? Uh, at first it was a challenge, but now I've learned to, to grow from it and to use it to help other people avoid situations that are gonna lead down drug addiction and, and abuse like that. So this is the first year my grandparents are gonna make it out from my mom's side. They didn't make it last year because it was a little emotional for him. I'm extremely proud of him. He took something that was bad and then turned it really good for himself. He's done a lot of help for other individuals by going out and talking about this. He's got a big future ahead of him. I'm looking forward to watching him for many years to come. All of us face tragedies in life, and it's not so much how much you withdraw within yourself as how much you give to other people in reaction to those tragedies and what you do with the opportunities they may present. And obviously, this kid has done the best he possibly could. Mitch Cannon when I went up to Oregon I, I was talking to the guys about Mitch Cannon and he said he did have that personal tragedy and he's used it as opportunities to talk to kids about drug abuse there's a lot of outreach programs he's very much involved with so he's just a wonderful guy a great baseball player but a guy that is taking a personal tragedy and making something positive out of it. Yeah, he's somebody uh, you just want to root for him you know heart and soul for uh, to have a great life. Cavasini will be the pinch hitter against Gerbevac, who is on for the 28th time this year. Another good ERA on this Oregon State staff, 2.36. This is as deep a pitching as you can find, isn't it? They will keep coming at you. Cavasini, who had a great College World Series a year ago for North Carolina, has had an eye injury this year, been limited to pinch hitting duty, pinch running duty and play in center field. Can't get around on a fastball there at 90 from Gerbevac. North Carolina errors four against OSU in two games that led to five unearned runs. And if they lose that will be the difference. Their inability to get them home in clutch situations and their inability to make routine plays at times. They have left nine on through six innings tonight. Cavasini chops it down to first. One gone. It's unusual to see that Pat Casey two out of the last three innings upset about fundamental errors on part of his club because they live and die by that. If they don't get the fundamentals done they're toast. Yeah, definitely they you know but but I tell you what I mean I, I think that was a kind of communication a couple of missed signs here and there. You know they're still putting the bat on the ball they're still you know doing the small things uh, for the most part to put themselves in the position to win and listen they're in the driver's seat. You know they have the latitude to be able to make or be able to deal with a couple of mistakes. You know they're winning seven to three. Now if you're losing seven to three, every single every single mistake just becomes a huge huge mistake. Chopped up the middle and through into center field. It 
it is so hard to repeat. Texas lost in the regional last year. The 04 champion Cal State Fullerton made it to the Super Regional but lost. Rice lost in the regional after the 03 championship and Texas got to the College World Series but lost in the semifinals to Rice. And with more and more baseball programs having success and spreading out the talent more teams get back here and it's even tougher to repeat and especially if you're Oregon State it's still a remarkable story. Uh, the Bruce brothers LSU came in here and hammered balls to win it 96 97 Stanford had back to back USC 70 71 72 73 74 our buddy Fred Lynn right in the middle of that. That was coach Rod Dato. Yes it was. Pretty amazing program at that time. The great gentleman we lost a year ago. His son Terry still comes out here every year. That one's fouled at the plate. North Carolina down by four here in the seventh. Or we talked to North Carolina they said last year when they were in the driver's seat in this position in the middle of game two they started counting outs they thought they had it and it's a natural process for your mind to go to that to think all we need is this many and we win a national championship Oregon State right now their mindset they've got to avoid that. Well you do it's the difference between concentrating on results and execution and you really can get in trouble when you start thinking about being the hero or the goat or what you need to do as far as the results are concerned you've got to think about keeping the ball down as a pitcher putting a good at bat on him as a batter how many outs where do I need to throw the ball after I pick this up as an infielder you know baseball in order to be successful as a baseball player you have to be able to anticipate I think the guys that are in situations where they're successful are the guys that understand the game understand what's about to come come forth so you know of course you know playing at this particular level but when you go to the next level you know you don't start counting outs you understand that hey I've got to continue to execute every single pitch every single at bat, every single batter and I've got to expect that every ball is going to be hit to me you know sometimes guys are out there and and, and as Oral talked about they're only worried about the results and the bigger picture hey we're going to win a championship well how are we going to get there and, and the I'm, I want to be me that's right. Three, two. The higher Three you balls get up, and two strikes the higher you get up in this game the the more times you compete against somebody who has the same exact ability as you do and then the differences in winning and losing or breaking you know getting a hit or getting a guy out is concentration. Three two to Williams smoked fair ball down the left field line Federoff on his way to third they're going to wave him home here's the throw to the plate he is out on one hand I'm surprised they sent him on the other hand I'm not they needed to score. They don't get the big hits. This was one and a chance to get it home. Well they get the big hit and it's a great relay. You've got to take your hat off to Oregon State. Darwin Barney makes an unbelievable throw. Mitch hangs in there for the relay. But remember Mike Fox the head coach is the third base coach. He is there because he doesn't want to put this pressure on any of his assistants. He wants to make the call and with one out down seven to three I think it was the wrong call. What a relay from Darwin Barney. And we talked about this guy being able to change the game from the defensive end and this is just another situation. Of course you know he had some help. Wallace gets the ball into him. Very nice job down the line. But here you go. Strong arm. Absolutely accurate. And can him stand right there and just catching the ball and applying the tag. These guys just fundamentally sound, just doing the small things, and those are the things that make the difference in the ball game. Canham did a great job. The throw was a little bit to the foul ball side of home plate. He had his right foot right on the baseline. Yeah, that was pretty. The more I watch Darwin Barney play, the more I see Derek Jeter out there. And I'm sorry, Barry, I'm sitting next to you. <laughs> but just the guy that's playing currently, somebody that you doesn't really have power but can hit for power. 
you know, doesn't have the strongest of arms, but knows how to use the arm he has. You know, is very good with his feet and gets in great position and anticipates the game. He's got a cl great clock for the game. And then the smile, something that you can put on, you know, down there and mark it like you can in New York. I mean, it's amazing. It's a fourth rounder for the Cubs. It's a good, good shot. Strike called to Seager. And if North Carolina was down a little bit before that play, they got to be way down now. It's amazing on one play, you can go from yes. you know, the top of the mountain to the bottom of the valley. It's, it's just amazing the, the swings, the emotional swing. Struck him out. A single and a double in the inning and nothing to show for it. Great relay. Great tag. Good night. Welcome back to the College World Series. Now time for our Coke Zero game track. Tremendous defensive play by Darwin Barney and Wallace in left field as well. And it's 7 3 as we go to the eighth. Barney also has that two run homer. Stutes went five and a third for Oregon State. He stands to be the winner. Let's go to Kyle Peterson. Thanks, Mike. Just talked to Mike Fox, and you just see the look on his face. And it's kind of a look on, on everybody in this Tar Hill dugout's face right now, just trying to make something happen on that last play. He said, Listen, I'll take that one. That one's on me. Look down the line. Thought that we had a little bit better chance than in the end we did, but he said that all of the blame falls on me on that one. And, and you could just see as you walk up up and down this dugout that just not quite sure if they can come back off the canvas again. They just had the, the wind knocked out of them so many different times today. We'll go back and think about what would have happened if the run scores. It's a three run game. They got a runner at second. The momentum may be going their way. One less out. The emotion starts to get up in the dugout. Instead, it's a stake right in your chest. Mark Flurry is in to catch. In place of Fedorovich. Well, last night they had winner aid in the dugout. Tonight, sweep and sour sauce. <laughs> Doesn't sound too appetizing. The thought's great, but I'm not sure it's a great marketing ploy. Yeah, I don't know if I'd be drinking that right there. <laughs> oh. Two and two, breaking ball hangs high. Joey Wong with a chance to hit here in the eighth. That got him on a curveball that did get in the zone. One gone in the eighth for Oregon State. Excuse me, that was Lisman, not Wong. This middle of the order has been outstanding right here, four through seven. Nine for 13 tonight. That includes Mitch Canham, Darwin Barney, John Wallace, Scott Sanchi. Darwin right there looking forward to his at bat. He just can't stop smiling, can he? <laughs> Got another pitching change for North Carolina. Woodard will come on for the heels here in the eighth. Back at the College World Series, eighth inning, Oregon State batting here in the eighth, leading by four. And a new pitcher on, Robert Woodard, the senior from Charlotte, North Carolina, the all time career leader in wins for the Tar Heels of North Carolina. Oral 11 and 2 this year. He's a solid young man. He loves to compete. He's a strike thrower with good movement. You look at that face right there. He doesn't care what the scoreboard says. It's about getting outs right now. Somebody else is going to have to take care of the offense. K 
Canham and Darwin Barney the two stars of this ball club are next. Woodard's got that unusual delivery he takes that first step and it's so fast you would think it would be very difficult mechanically to stay in any kind of rhythm. But he's really good with it. Well the one thing he does Mike is that even though it's a very abrupt step back he leaves his head at home his head stays over the ball of his feet so it really doesn't change his balance if he would take his head with him then it would throw him out of whack and it would take a lot of athletic ability to keep your balance and your athleticism to throw strikes skied on the infield and now drifting out toward the left fielder Reed Frank who will make the catch and our sincerest thoughts and prayers for Erica Menard a very valuable member of our crew. She lost her stepfather, Kendall Kusera, earlier in the week. Erica, we are thinking about you and your family, and we wish you nothing but the best. Our thoughts and our prayers are with you. Barney takes up and in. Barry, when you're hitting off somebody with this kind of delivery, you just kind of nullify the leg kick and look for where the ball comes out. Yeah, you definitely have to take that out. It's much, much like hitting against a guy like Hideo Nomo, who has such a delay in his. Uh... Is it a catch in left field? It is not. It is a base hit. Reed Frock took a couple of false steps back. I think one umpire called him out. The left field umpire called him safe. Frank starts back then sprints in and he trapped it and was on the good, short hop good call by the umpire there just doesn't get there doesn't quite get there rarely do you see a ball go into a glove that way too usually that's a complete miss it just caught the thumb of the glove and went into the webbing because his glove was up instead of down. Yeah, usually you see the outfielder come in and the, the webbing kind of gets turned under and the ball hits the ground and goes into the glove facing up. That one the glove was still facing up and the glove the ball just kind of caught the, the thumb. <laughs> the ball caught the glove. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Second hit of the night for Darwin Barney. When you're hitting against a guy like Robert Woodard you know he has something different in his windup. You definitely don't want to look at that particular part of it. Because that throws you off, and I'm sure that's why he does it. Well, probably to help his mechanics. But you know, as a hitter, you're thinking the pitcher out there is out there trying to disrupt your momentum. So as a hit, as a hitter, if someone has something a little quirky that they do, you nullify that by not even looking at it. I remember there are times when I was facing Hideo Nomo, and he go through his windup, and I start looking at the second baseman, and start to pick him up when he's about to deliver the ball to the plate. Of course, he doesn't have that advantage out of the stretch. We'll have to watch Barry's eyes if he ever makes a comeback and start having my second baseman do a really <laughs> funky leg kick. Well, you won't have to worry about that part. <laughs> the coming back. Yeah, that coming back part. You know, over 50 league or something. <laughs> I think that train may have left the station for both of you guys. Yeah, it was time for me to go, and I'm glad I made the decision. And. Uh, you know it's just uh, it was just time to go body said you know what it's time to go. Well you certainly had multiple opportunities as this ball is lofted to deep right and caught on the run Fedorov with a sensational play in right that saves another run. So North Carolina trying to get it done in the field what they need is some big at bats they only have six outs left to stay alive in the College World Series. Like family, that's something we established early on. Once uh, we all got here to Oregon State in the fall, is that you know we're not a team, we're a family. Get up, everybody, and sing. Oh, I can hear you now. Get up, everybody, and 
it's pretty special to bring everyone together and, you know, create that family atmosphere and that trust. <laughs> There's one thing to pay lip service to it. There's another thing to live it, and they certainly have as a family. I mean, we've all been in situations where people referred to it as family, but then Uncle Joe would have to eat Thanksgiving dinner out on a porch because we didn't like him nearly as much. Well, embrace it and, and really enjoy it because uh, things change a little bit once you start getting paid to do it. You know, I mean, you, you still have some good buddies on your team but I mean a lot of transactions uh, a lot of guys moving in and out and people are playing for their livelihood now so it changes things a little. Chad Flack goes down swinging here's Aaron. Well Mike the talk in Oregon State's dugout right now five outs until Corvallis but that also means five outs until they say goodbye to guys like Mitch Canham and Darwin Barney and Darwin told me before the game today he actually started thinking about it this morning. He said it was weird that he's not going to be back next year. He said, told me he never had friendships like this before with his teammates and his coaches. And they've expressed the same sentiments to us all week long that this team would not be here right now without Mitch and Darwin Barney. Well, it'll probably tear him up a little bit inside, but it's something he will remember for the rest of his life, and that makes it worthwhile. Here's Garrett Gore. I don't think they're ready to go yet. Carolina trying to hang in there. This is they have been in the finals back to back years. They are so talented. They have worked so hard to get here and they have had so many bad things happen to them in the finals the last two years. But they were on a mission this year to come back and redeem themselves. Garrett Gore swings and misses. They'll have to throw him out. That's the second out of the inning and Gerbovac has struck out the first two here in the eighth. You can keep up with the College World Series and every other championship sport offered by the NCAA by logging on to NCAA sports.com and you can be updated on all 88 NCAA championships. Gore is gone. We'll go back to the top of the order and we got a little meeting on the hill and it looks like Joe Patterson will be coming in. The lefty who we have seen before who has been so effective. Gerbovac gets a great hand as he leaves with two out in the eighth. Back after this. With two outs in the North Carolina eighth, we're back at Rosenblatt Stadium in Omaha. The heels down to their last four outs, and they'll have to do it against Joe Patterson, the big lefty who has been so effective. He has appeared in all five College World Series games so far and he'll face the leadoff man Reed Frank. Huge huge part of their pitching staff back in the regionals pitched June 1st June 4th June 5th six innings three and two thirds and three innings seven, 12 point two innings seven hits one earned run. He is a workhorse and against this Carolina team with the great left handed hitters he was going to be a key to this series for sure and they did not start him 25 appearances this year 18 starts but they wanted him out of the bullpen pitched yesterday two and two thirds innings 39 pitches out there again today and look at that 1.17 ERA on the ground to Joey Wong three up three down Oregon State one inning away from repeating as the national champions. Now it's time here in Omaha for our Pontiac game changing performance and it's Darwin Barney got it started at the plate with a two run homer his first time up a line drive to left field and then made the defensive play of the night with a tremendous relay throw to Mitch Canham that cut down a huge run at the plate. The do it all shortstop. Bottom third of the order for Oregon State here in the ninth. A real statement by the Pac-10 again if there's 
Back to back championships for this club another feather in their cap USC of course 12 national titles Arizona State five only one coming after they joined the Pac-10 Arizona State with three California with two Stanford with two Oregon State could join the list at two in an inning from now and Mitch Canham enjoying every second of it. Jonathan Casey who had a uh, great sprint onto the field last year when Oregon State won the title looking forward to a repeat. Sanchi takes it down and in. If you're Oregon State sure you want to score but really you get the feeling you almost just want to get out of the way and get on to the bottom of the night. Well if you're up there hitting of course of course you know as a team you want to score. Uh, Santi's up here he's he's still battling you know and it and it's a it's a philosophy every single pitch that means keep the concentration there guys because we saw what happened last year with the guys across the across the field when you start thinking about the end result. Absolutely. Last year it gave us one of the more touching moments in College World Series. Pat Casey's son John made his way down to the field after the final out of the championship game and had a memorable moment with his dad. Great time to share the joy between those two. So Sanchi is on with the base on balls, and Brandon Wells will go in to run for him. And then you can uh, bet that Wells will go on to play right field. Or Braden Wells, excuse me. And Leonardton stands in with a chance to do some more damage. For the Beavers. Three ten on the year. The only time he's been on base tonight, reached on an error. But we saw his power last night. Hit a home run to right center that was a bomb. Staring intently down at the third base. Coaching box to see if something's going on, and he squares the bunt, takes it for a strike. Here's a guy who doesn't have much experience in this department. He sacrificed once this year. Yeah, I think he was just going to take a pitch from right there, see if he can build a count. And watching the signs being flashed down there at third, which there have been some cross signals. With that size and that power, I don't think they have asked him to sacrifice too many times this year. No. No, but he did in the seventh inning. He did lay down a bunt. Yep. And mm -hmm. the pitcher threw it away. So maybe the element of surprise there. But, you know, and I think we've seen that throughout the entire series is that regardless of your home run hitter or not, if your team needs you to put it down on the ground, you're going to do it. Which would lead to your point at the beginning of the broadcast that North Carolina has not done it. And, and that would be the difference in this World Series. They've continually struggled and Oral talked about it when you get to a higher level everybody on the on the on the field especially kind of at this level everybody on the field is a good baseball player but the difference is execution. Leonard crushes one to dead center field. It's out of here. Off the second wall. Sacrifice this. A blast back to back nights he has just crushed balls his nickname is moose and he's hearing it from the crowd Jordan Leonardton just gets a fastball out over the plate and he's not thinking hey this game is over <laughs> no, he, he had he had single digit home runs before that swing right there. He Ten doesn't home anymore. Ten home runs look so much better than nine. 
And now it's nine to three. You want to check the win probability? That's going to be up there. How about 99? I'll bet. Got one right finally. Leckle, good stab at third and throws him out. Leonardton, a Canadian kid, his nickname is Moose. You watch the moose horns go up, and they're going to rack them. <laughs> the whole team. Hopkins will stand in one out two runs home in the ninth. They will have at least a six run lead going into the bottom of the ninth inning and the most improbable of World Series repeaters could be moments away. They lost six of eight position players two thirds of their starters their closer and most of the rest of the bullpen. And yet here they are. A testament to great young kids leadership of two veterans great coaching and a program that has now established itself two years in a row as the premier program in college baseball. And from a part of the country you wouldn't believe a coach that could have went to Notre Dame might not have been coming back. And a team that has yet to dogpile. <laughs> they would not dogpile. Mitch Cannon would not let them dogpile at the regionals. And he said, we're only going to dogpile one place, guys. That's for the national title. Screamer down the third baseline. Hopkins really cleared his hips and turned on one and just smoked it for a double. If they hang on, they would be the first team in the history of college baseball to have a losing conference record and still go on to win a national championship. They were 10 and 14 in the Pac-10. Nobody expected the win here except them. And it was a question of whether they would even get in the 64 team field. All they needed to do was get in and they have been on a tremendous roll ever since. And I would think that evidence would be that the selection committee did their job. Absolutely. And they really earned it that early season schedule because of the weather in Oregon they go on the road so much they have played so many good teams that almost no matter what their record is on those trips they build up a lot of RPI points. And that's one of the big factors the committee looks at when they go into that selection process. You play so many good teams you know you're not really concerned about the RPI go play so many good teams because you want to put your players against the best out there and kind of really get a good test on where you are. And that did not go unnoticed. No and they played very well on those road trips they didn't play poorly until they got into the conference season and that's when they went into their slump. And they they played the very first baseball game of this college season. January 25th a Thursday at Hawaii <laughs> before the regular season started for all other schools that yep. was the very first game and they are in the possibly the very last as guys you know as a, as a as a collegiate athlete that has got to be a tough road trip to make. Oh yeah to Hawaii I mean can you imagine well they went from oh, Hawaii <laughs> to Georgia to the Coca Cola Classic and Surprise Arizona. To in the River City Classic in Davis, California, to Sacramento, California, to College Station, Texas. You got some freaking flyer miles. They didn't get home to Corvallis till March 8th. Long taps it back toward the mound. They'll throw him out at first for the second out of the inning. So Wong is gone to bring up Lisman, a runner at third. Glad you could join us for the College World Series. It has been terribly exciting out here for 10 days, and we are closing in on what could be the finish. Oregon State with a six run lead in the ninth. They are still batting. 
North Carolina three outs away from failing the second year in a row in the finals. Strike called on Lisbon. If you're looking ahead, Horton, Ackley, and Fedorovich are set to hit. Excuse me, Fedorovich has been replaced at the catching position. You would expect Benji Johnson to come on. But that's what they'll have the heart of the lineup or the heart of the order coming up in the bottom of the ninth. The 0 2, a high fastball. A ball and two strikes to Lisman. Pops it up on the infield. Ackley will make the catch will go to the bottom of the ninth. last chance for the heels they are down six with three outs to go. A repeat celebration would be, would be just like the first crazy and exciting you, you can't really explain the feeling of, of jumping into that dog pile and holding up that trophy. I mean, just to win one's unbelievable, and to win two has never been done by our school. We got our first one last year. I'm having a chance to do it again, be doing it for not only myself and my family, but the whole Northwest in general, proving that baseball is a real deal out there. That was last year. They are looking for repeat performance. They are only three outs away. The Beavers up nine to three. Patterson is on with a chance to finish it. Josh Horton the junior from Hillsboro North Carolina leads it off in the ninth. One out hit hard but right at Leckel. Jonathan Casey. Boy, he had a great time the last two years. What a thrill ride for him. Nice to be associated with the winning team in that. <laughs> Ackley, who has a home run and another base hit tonight, also walked, takes a crossfire, hits it right at Wong, almost ate him up. But this kid's got a great glove, and that's two out. Two hard hit balls, but two outs. Shelton will come on as the pinch hitter the last chance for North Carolina ball one from Patterson. The 10th round draft choice of the San Francisco Giants trying to clinch back to back national championships. Pat Casey is pacing like a cat. Strike call. Three balls and a strike. Fedorov would be next. Three and two.
Well, they waited all year to do another dog pile, and they did it right. Yes, they did, man. That's, that never gets old. I'm telling you, that's a wonderful feeling. And for the second year in a row, the Tar Heels of North Carolina see heartbreak at the College World Series. You can take great pride in making it here two years in a row, even greater pride at making it to the finals two years in a row. But it still leaves an empty place when you don't win at all. I've been on the empty side of the equation twice with the Cleveland Indians and been on top of the pile once with the Dodgers. And you're right, you'll never get over the losses. Let's go down to Aaron. She's with Darwin Barney. Mike, thanks so much. Your second straight dog pile, Barney. What's that moment like for you? I mean, words can't explain. You know, I mean, this team is so close. Uh, you know, everyone doubted us in the middle of the year, and we went through ups and downs, but, you know, we really, we really took in the word family. And I think that, you know, this is most special for those freshmen. And, you know, seeing the looks on their faces, it's, you know, I wouldn't change it for anything in the world right now. It is so difficult to repeat here in the College World Series final. What was the biggest reason why you guys did that? You know, we got heart, you know, and a lot of people thought that our team was weak. And, uh, you know, coming from the Northwest, it was, it was something that couldn't fathom. But, uh, you know, we just showed how deep we are and, and, and how good we play baseball. You know, we play well uh, over there, and I think that, uh, you know, hopefully the, the, the whole nation will see. A nice moment with you and Pat Casey embracing. What did he say to you then? You know, <laughs> he goes, you told me early in the year if we win this thing, you're going to come back next year. <laughs> and uh, I got to think about that yeah, one. I don't yeah. know, but, uh, you know, He's, he's been there for the past three years, and uh, you know I just want to say I love my mom and dad. Thank you. You guys have been there my whole life. I love you guys. Congratulations. Now let's send it over to Kyle. All right, Mitch Canham, two national championships in a row. Just tell me your thoughts right now. I'm too tired to think right now. It was a grind, but these guys got a lot of heart, man, and uh, it's awesome. I, I told everyone we were going to come back. A lot of people didn't believe us, but you know I knew once we got in the door, we were going to do this all along. Take me back a couple weeks ago. You guys go down to UCLA, maybe knowing that you got to go down there and take two out of three to even get into the tournament. What changed? What's the biggest difference between now and then? Because we can fight with our backs against the wall. Over in Oregon, we get a little toughness on us. So just, just because we're in a, in, a, in a tough situation, maybe not making it to regionals and stuff, it ain't going to hold us back. We're going to find a way to get it done. You were the guy telling this team, we're not going to dogpile in regionals. We're not going to dogpile in super regionals. Right. We're going to wait until we get to Omaha. What was this dogpile like? Hey, this was phenomenal. You know, I remember, remember from last year, I was on the bottom again, and I was worried about Joe because he had the weight all over him. So we were just smiling, and I think I had a, a foot in my face or whatever. I don't know. It was awesome. <laughs> Mitch, congratulations. Thank Go back there. Appreciate it. Jorge Reyes named most outstanding player, 18 years old, freshman. What does that mean to you when you hear those words? Uh, I just I, was, I started to cry. It's, uh, I worked so hard all my life to uh, just to be a champion, and I finally got it. And uh, being the most outstanding player, I really, it's not something I was on my mind. It was just I'm a team player, and uh, our whole team deserves it. What was that dog pile like for you? I Watching it on TV last year, I watched it about seven times. and. Actually, being in it this year is just amazing. I know you have a couple people that made a long trip from Mexico. Anything you'd like to say to them? Uh, I love your grandparents. I love my grandpa up in the sky. He's been helping me this whole time. My dad and my mom, I love them for coming out, and uh, everybody was watching. Congratulations. Let's send it back upstairs. All right, Aaron, thanks very much. Reyes, the fifth freshman to win the most outstanding player the first since Houston Street did it in 2002. Six members of this ball club on the all tournament team. Canham, Wong, Barney, Sanchi, Lisman, and Reyes. And as you just saw, Reyes, the most outstanding player. Boy, oh boy, what a series and what a final game. These guys were really fun to, to, to cover and 
you know, there, there's so much to say about doing the small things to put yourself in, in a position to win. These guys, uh, you know, they're not a team that you look at an individual on their team and, and say, wow, this guy has all the talent in the world. They've got a lot of very good players that do a lot of the small things. And collectively, you know, they got the synergy and, and they're so much stronger collectively than individually. And, and, you know, this is a wonderful example of college athletics of working together. A lot of uh, credit goes to Coach Casey doing a tremendous job in coaching and, you know, in the world, the pitching staff just was outstanding. Uh, it was a, just a great example of a team effort, and that team effort was led by the pitching. The starters ended up 5-0. and oh. They all went deep into the game. This was the first outing tonight that they didn't go six-plus innings, and for a freshman to lead them and end up an MVP, it shows a lot to do with the character of the individuals they bring in here, the recruiting they've done, what they do once they get here. It's an absolutely amazing effort. Back down to Aaron Andrews. Aaron. Well, this is the moment Beaver Nation has been waiting for. The presentation of the championship trophy. Send it over to Larry Templeton, chairman of NCAA College One Division or Division One College Baseball. Larry. Coach Casey, on behalf of the Division One Baseball Committee, it's with a great pleasure we present you the 2007 National Championship and. I think you'll know where to put it because you just received one last year. Congrats, congratulations. Thank you very much. The, the tournament. There's a reason this is the greatest tournament on the face of the earth, and the greatest of event. It's because of what you guys do for us. I appreciate it very much. Thank you, Coach. Good luck. Well, Coach, let me ask you, holding this for the second straight time, how does it feel? Uh, you know, I, I don't know what to tell you. It's all about those guys over there in the pinstripes, you know. Uh, the Beaver Nation up there getting after it pretty good. I like that. Is it about those guys why were they able to bring you another title well we just got great we got great kids with great character we got a great coaching staff we've had great continuity in what we've done um, but man I can't tell you anything other than it's about the guys across the white lines and getting the dirt for the Oregon State Beavers and uh, what a run it's been um, we struggled there for a while and uh, we had our people stay behind us and the 25 guys standing over here believed in everything we were doing and this is their trophy this is their trophy right here Winning back-to-back -back titles hasn't been done in 10 years. What does this moment say about Oregon State baseball? Well, I hope it just says that, you know, that um, we're in here to stay, and um, it's just a great tribute to our program, to our kids. Uh, but I, I think coaches are getting way too much credit for this. You know, it's all about those guys playing the game, and uh, I'm just a blessed man to be able to work with them. Thank you, Coach. Congratulations. Let's send it to Kyle now. Thanks, EA, with Mike Fox. And, and Mike, just tell me your thoughts right now after this one. Well, I mean, you know, it's obviously very disappointing. Uh, my hat's off to Oregon State. What an accomplishment that is, you know, back to back. I, I didn't, I don't think you'll ever, I didn't think you'd ever see that as good of teams there are, you know, in, in Division One. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm proud of our players, obviously, for the kind of year we had and um, 57 wins. I mean, uh, you know, it's disappointing, but uh, you know, life goes on, and uh, it just wasn't meant to be for us. What do you say to your guys after this one? Well, I tell them, you know, I, I tell them I love them and. You know, I'm gonna miss all the seniors and the guys that are gonna sign, and you know we're gonna we're gonna regroup and get back on the recruiting trail, and we're gonna do our darnest to get back out of here again. Mike, congratulations on another outstanding season. Thanks for joining us too. Absolutely, thank you. All right, Kyle. Thanks very much to you and Aaron. This dream come true is presented by Disney Theme Parks. Guys, another tremendous experience here in Omaha. What do you think? I tell you, this is my first time being able to experience this from up in the booth, and I, I just had an absolute blast. A lot, I learned a lot. Um, but I tell you, baseball is a beautiful game, especially when you do the little things. You always like to see the guys that you know aren't the best athletes become come successful because of their execution. And I think that's a this was a perfect illustration of that. Just a fantastic time for me. My first time here ever, never as a college player, first time as a broadcaster. Omaha does a great job, and congratulations to the Beavers. They lay it on the line. I just love to watch them play. The Oregon State Beavers now back-to-back -back College World Series champions. Next on ESPN2, the ProCare RX NHRA Super Nationals, along with Oral Hershiser, Barry Larkin, Aaron Andrews, Kyle Peterson, and our entire ESPN crew. This is Mike Patrick. Thanks for watching. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. We've had an exceptional time here. We leave you with some of the great moments of the 2007 College World Series. Can be
Sing that song 